Hi Trevor, can you hear me? Hi Jason, yes I can. Can you see me? Um, I can't see you now, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, select the camera, it says, yeah. Uh, it says stop video. Ah, there we go. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thanks, yeah. Yeah, looking forward yeah. to it, because I've, I've, I've missed the last couple, so. Yeah, you've been off gallivanting in Scotland and things, haven't you? Oh, yeah, all that kind of stuff, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your help the other day. Um, and any time, just pull it if you think, Ugh. I have no problem. Sure. That's fine. It's always one of those things when, when you're talking about something that's, that, that, that can be um, quite painful to others. You know, people can react, but, you know, as, as long as it isn't harmful, directly to others or insulting them you know it's fine i tried to do it at um, an open mic session live in a pub um words mm. of music up in tinton uh, and um i checked with the people that ran it and said mm, actually we're not comfortable with that they come to enjoy themselves <laughs> <laughs> so i pulled it you have another guest we do yes hi mara Hello, I've just realised I put my drink down. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was being so organised. Right, hope well, I was wondering, is it, uh, I haven't been able to get hold of um, Josephine to get permission. I can't imagine that she would object, but um, if, you, if you've got the knobs to, to press, I wouldn't mind just showing yes. the graphics that go with it. I will. I'll need to work out how to do that. I do know it's possible. So advanced sharing options. There we go. Well, I think that's it then. Okay, so who can share? So what I would do, I click on share screen, would I? Yeah, do you want to do a quick test? Yeah. Can you see that? Uh, I can't now. Hang on a second. We good. No, nothing showing yet. Oh, maybe I need to do something else. I, I can see it on my screen, so perhaps I need to do something else. Okay, let's have a look. Ah, I see. There should be a setting to share. There we go. We've got it. Great. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. Nice and easy. Great. 
that's brilliant. I'll click and on then stop obviously, share. Um, when finished, um, click on stop share. Click, click on the stop share so everyone else like can that. Yeah, nice and easy. Great. Brilliant. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marilyn. It's my first time here. Um, it... Are we screen sharing the poems as we read them or? Um, well, normally it's just reading them. It's, it's it, just right, if someone's got a, a picture to share that's that's relevant. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, I saw that on Facebook earlier. <laughs> ah, yes. yes, it was my grandson's first poem ever. He's nine, so oh, tell him well done. And he lives over in Tennessee, so um, they might be just tuning in. So, if you get some strangers knocking on the door, Jason, um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> they could be from Tennessee. <laughs> Okay, just waiting for uh, Francesca to join us. Here comes Peter. Hi, Francesca, can you hear us? Probably, probably having trouble to connect there. Hi, Peter. Hi, Jason. Uh, can you add Kimberly Johnson to the list? Just bear with me a second. Hey, Alicia. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Not too bad. Great. Hi, Marilyn. Hello. <laughs> Am I saying hello to you? Oh, hello, Peter. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think Joe's finished trying to get you. Just bear with me a second. No, nope, no one yet. Ah, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So Hi. Hi. So Hi. I got that the, he, your two links were together, so of course I clicked Sue's link, not the this link. But I'm here. I'm here. So that's the important bit. Hi, Marilyn. Hello. 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 Hi, Josephine. Hi, Lucia. Hello. Hello. Hi, David. Oh, you got new glasses, Jason? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've reached that age where I need glasses now. So Very think, smart. Oh. Very smart. Hello, Michelle. Hi. You all right? Yes. Thank you. You? Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Just grabbing my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it's not what he's working on. <laughs> no, thankfully. That'd be a very short meeting. Here comes Clive, that's a relief. Yes, that's good. Hello, Josephine. Hello, you are right? Yes, thank you. Okay. Hello. Are you doing your funny voice, Clive? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, all right? Yeah. Good here, I am. Long time no see. Yeah, I haven't seen you for ages. Must be all of 24 hours. Yeah, nearly. <laughs> you haven't seen me as for a while. No. How are you doing? I'm all right now. I didn't sleep. <laughs> no. I haven't been to sleep since four o'clock this morning, so we'll see how we get on. <laughs> I've You're got a period of insomnia. Don't ask me how it starts. Hi, Doc. How are you doing? Hello. Oh, I'm, right? I'm alive. At least I think I am. Good. <laughs> I think we've got Jan Hedger there, but she's upside down. That's all. I'm, uh, is that better? Okay. Yes, I was lovely. Yes. Around. <laughs> oh. Josephine, if you have uh, insomnia, maybe it's time uh, starting to paint something. Oh. I don't think I've got time to paint anything. <laughs> the morning, I used to paint. I used to paint about two or three years ago. I used to go to art classes, but uh, it seems to have all gone by the way. But never mind. Um, so she's like. So I'm think. just. I've got a little square that's stuck to the wall up there. Oh, yeah. And so, of course, it sticks into the middle of the pic 
watch. <laughs> Move it so you can't really see it. <laughs> there you go. Is that a magnet? Yes, it's the magnet for the picture on the wall. <sighs> How are you doing, Clive? Yeah, not bad. I'm knackered as well. I didn't sleep much last night. But... Matchstick. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a few days off work now, though. So that's... Oh, good. You can catch yeah. up then. Yeah. Yeah. Not back till Monday, that's yeah. Good. No, I've just got to check I've got the right glasses or I won't be able to read what I'm seeing or see what I'm reading, rather. You might get a few things going the wrong way around tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, don't that. <laughs> I believe, don't that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, we should, if, if the list is to believe, be believed, we've got a lot of people coming. Yeah, there is a lot, yeah. I haven't got the full list. Oh, yes, I have. It's over there. There we go. I think I might start ticking off people who have arrived. So, <laughs> like, it's, like being a, off. <laughs> it's like being a teacher with a, re with a register, isn't it? Marilyn's here. Please, Mr. to yes, put our hands up. <laughs> yes, Jean's <Miss>. here. <laughs> like uh, a red pen. <laughs> Trevor's here. Peter's here. Doc Janning's here. You got Doc Janning down twice. That's because he bought about three tickets. Oh. <laughs> well, that was my accident. <laughs> I know they were free, but it's a bit excessive. <laughs> um, I got I you down twice. I've got you down twice, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> There's and only Brian. eight people coming. They've just all registered 40 times. <laughs> Brian Franco twice. That's, that's because the only way you can check that the, the link details are on the ticket is actually by downloading the ticket. Actually, I've got Doc Channing three times. That's what I said. Three? Oh, my word. <laughs> Did you know you were triple-headed the night? Ah, oh, did not know that. <laughs> so we've got Clive. That's just as well. We've got Jason, which is just as well. We've got me, which is just as well. Right. We're again in there. We're still a bit early, aren't we? Do you know, I've noticed with Zoom that people only start coming in about five minutes after we actually supposed to start. Uh, we notice it's the opposite with Beehive. I, I usually open this about 15 minutes before we do to start, and I get absolutely overwhelmed with people coming in. All oh, right. <laughs> Obviously doing something wrong. I have to sort of pass the word around. I, th I think it's us that are doing it wrong, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always waiting for Nick to come in, and I'm absolutely, like, got messages galore going off. I can't get in, I can't get in, and I'm trying to talk to people and send people the link and everything else, and it, it gets absolutely chaotic. Right. That's the legend that is UV high. Yeah. Hello, Sally. Hi. Did you get your copy of the trawler? I did, yes. Thank you very much. Good. Yeah. We've yeah. um we are starting to disseminate the trawler. Um, but we are getting to Cheltenham tomorrow. So Cheltenham people will get it tomorrow. Lovely. Lost of people got it today, and the forest might get it over the weekend, and the rest we put in the post. I got mine uh, a few days ago. Oh, you do you buy yours? Yes. Ah. Oh, did, did was a free copy? <laughs> no, only Who's if you're a fellowship you? member. Ah, right. Okay. Are you a fellowship? Hello, Claire. Member? Sorry, I've just seen you there, Claire Morris. Yeah. Hi. Oh, that, that, that's hi. actually that's actually my good lady wife. <laughs> oh, hello. Nice to meet you. And, and, and I'm peering yeah. in to see what it's all about. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Thank I didn't you. know she was um she was joining us, so that's a surprise ah. to me. Keeping an eye on you. Keeping tabs on you. <laughs> I recognise that face. <laughs> she wasn't on the list, but she sneaked in. Oh right. <laughs> well, she could do her poem unhinged, which I think is wonderful. So there you go. I'll set you up. Well, it, it it'll I'm afraid it does depend on our open mic because we've got quite a few. Yeah, but, yeah, um, sorry. It full, depends actually. whether um no try and fit you in if we can. It's only it's six lines. Oh, is it? All right. I will probably manage that. They're very, 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 very long lines, but only six lines. <laughs> 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 Hello, Francesca. Chaser. 
How do you Frances pronounce that? Francesca. 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 Sorry. Francesca. Francesca. Is Francesca. it? Francesca. Yeah, Francesca. Every time I've seen Francesca anywhere, I've always pronounced it Francesca. So. Francesca. Okay. Francesca. Well, I think she's run away again. Is this somebody you know, Doc? Yes, I've uh, seen her at several other open mics. Okay. Really? Well, while we're all sitting here waiting, I'm, I'm going to go through a few of the books that we've been busily doing recently. So I don't know whether anybody <coughs> saw Take It By The Line, which was Chloe's book, Chloe Jacquet's book. She had her launch. Bloody brilliant it is too. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. And then, of course, we've got It Could Be Verse, which is Clive's book, and that's bloody brilliant too. So I think what we ought to do is to put the links on here. Jason, if we could, for books, it might be a good idea. I don't know how to do it myself. Then, of course, we've got the trawler, which you should all be getting eventually or getting for yourselves. Anybody who's a fellowship member gets this free. If they were a fellowship member on the 30th of September 2020, then they get a free copy. Um, if not, you can get it on Amazon for 10.99 or you can get it order it through any bookshop in the country or the world come to that matter for 10.99 and it really is worth every penny and especially as all the um all the money goes to the gps so that's even better reason for having it isn't it um and then of course we've got sue finch's launch coming up this month um, on the 17th of October, am I right? Saturday the yeah. 16th, yeah. Um, so please, please buy some tickets for that. This is a fabulous little book um, full of lovely, lovely poetry. And uh, I think that's about it. I could, if Peter's got his book, he could hold it up. I don't know whether you've got it with you. Oh. I'm in front of me. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to take that off because it's not the right side. Okay. Well, oh, the thing behind you, the bullseye. Looks like a bullseye was right in the centre. <laughs> there we go. Put all the book links in. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, Jason. And I would add that Jason is largely responsible for, well, certainly formatting the covers, often designing them. Sometimes uh, some of our poets have their own designers, like Chloe. But, um, or have their own ideas like Clive, but generally, this is a lot down to Jason. Brilliant. Wow. Well done, Jason. Do you draw? I do, yeah, yeah. No, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, oh. You're in the zone, Clive, You're on clearly. Form. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna press mine, which is also one of Jason's covers, Unravelings, that's my book by Black Eyes. Wow. Anybody wants that? That's available on Amazon, and I think it's a bit cheaper than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Something like seven quid. So go and find it. It's lovely. Um, how are we doing with people? We've got Laura Greville coming in. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. I'm hoping we're going to get Brian Franco in a moment. And uh, he said he wanted to go on early. Yes. That's why I'm hoping he comes on soon, <laughs> or he won't be. <laughs> um, um, if you have any uh, any poets laureate in your group, have them get in touch with me because uh, there's an anthology building and it's only including poets laureate. Is it? Hmm? Well, we've yes. got our own poet laureate, Ziggy Zeddy Dix. Um, I will make sure that he gets that message. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Contact. Hi, Catrice. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hello Brilliant. Lovely to Thank see you. you. Right. How are you? You're looking um, very fresh for all this poetrying that you do. <laughs> she was there. 
all day yesterday and then all evening yesterday evening and then back here this morning and and you were up at five o'clock yesterday morning yes I am one of those annoying <laughs> early birds everybody loves that <laughs> Oh, well, it wasn't five o'clock here, but you poor thing were five o'clock to do a workshop, if you please. Just imagine that getting mm-hmm. out of bed at five o'clock and doing a workshop. <laughs> that really, that's a commitment for you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's lovely to see you again. It's lovely to see you too. Hi, everybody. Everybody, Clive, Peter, oh. Josephine, Trevor. Hi, everyone, <laughs> and all these lovely new faces. Pleased to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah. We'll give it another two, we'll give it another three or four minutes, but after that, I think we're going to get going. Yeah. So, um. Does Tish ever come on these things? Well, Tish has got a problem at the moment with her eyes. Ah, okay. Um, so I think she's taking a back seat everywhere for the moment because she had a lot of problems and uh, screens cause her some trouble so I'm not quite sure what's happening I was in touch with her just the other day and of course she's in the trawler and we've just sent off a copy for her Um, but I I haven't heard that she's joining anybody anywhere at the moment so hopefully that won't be for too long which is another thing we were supposed to have um, Charlie Markwick coming I hope he hasn't fallen asleep. I've driven them all away. <laughs> you oh, must have done. They saw yeah, me performing so... last night. They thought, oh my God, I don't, I don't want to see that again. <laughs> I, 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 I spoke, well, texted, messaged Charlie today and he said he was coming. So I'm hoping... Well, somebody else just coming in. Yep. Kathy. Kathy Carsonell, brilliant. Charlie is on his way. Brilliant. Charlie's on his way. Great. That's Probably got stuck in traffic. You know where it's like. There he is. <laughs> hey, talk of the yeah, devil. Funny. Yes, where is he? <laughs> devil. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Sorry, we were just talking about you and you appeared oh, like some Lord. kind of genie in the bottle, you know. <laughs> Who is this man? Oh, look at you. Yeah. I know. And he's got no beard. It's Oh, oh it's amazing. I don't know where it's gone. But is I like it? the hat. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, it's time for the felt. It's time for the winter hats again. Yeah, we haven't got uh, Kathy Carson on our. Uh, no, there's people. I don't know. Have we not? No, we haven't. Oh, she's here. Though. No, Kathy's just watching. Hello, Kathy. Yeah. You're just watching. I'm just she watching. is on the Thank list. You she very bought, much. She is um, on the list. She bought a ticket. Well, I'm, ticket, but not no, I'm talking about um uh open mic no, you're just going that. to sit and watch tonight is that what you're saying i'm i'm busy multitasking i'm cooking while i'm watching so okay. i'm doing an amazing job of being a wife today <laughs> good for you <laughs> well done love it <laughs> well, I'm is that unusual? <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I tend to leave wifely duties alone now. I know, do. <laughs> Since Charlie's wearing a hat, I'll put on my Balmoral. Oh, carry Excellent. on. Well done, Doc. Woo! Nice to see you, Doc. My hat's going on later. Wow. Yeah. Michael's phone. Michael. Hello. 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 I'm guessing Ooh. you're out Hello. with your mask on somewhere. And oh, Clive. Hi, yeah. Clive. Hi, Marilyn. Hello. Hello. That's Michael yeah. Breen, is it? Hello. Oh, That's Michael, how, how are you doing? doing? I'm great. How are you, Clive? Not, not bad. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while. Where are you? <laughs> Just leaving work. Ah. In London. London, baby. Hey, Peter, did you get my email just now? Just now? Yeah. No, I'm on here, so I'm not looking at email, but I'll have a look. I sent an email saying, um, sorry for the late notice, um, I've got held up at work, so would you mind putting my slot uh, towards the back end? I you should are. be home in 45. Luckily, luckily, you are. In fact, you're on just before Clive, so you've got plenty of time. All right, brilliant. I should be home in 40 minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, I put you on around about half past eight, so you'll be fine. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
Uh, how's everybody? Doing fine, thank you. I don't know about anybody else, but I am, yeah. Yeah, hey, good here. Hi, Jason. Hi, Charlie. Hello. Right, well, I think we, although Brian Franco wanted to go on early, since he's not here, that's not going to be the point. It's not going to really be possible, is it? Well, not so first, I'm going to anyway. start off. We've already talked about the trawler and all the books that we've done. So <clears throat> tonight we're going to have open mics. Uh, we're going to have Lucia Daramus, Francesca, Francesa. Sorry, I'm not very good at that. Francesa. Is that how you pronounce it, Francesa? Is she gone? Have I, tr have I frightened her away? Hmm. You are very frightening, Josephine. <laughs> Um, then we've got Doc Janning, Andrew Stillborn, which I don't think we've got with us just yet. Trevor Valentine, we've got Jan Hedger. No, Jan yes, Hedger. We've got, yes, she's here. I heard Hi. the voices. Hi. Ah, yes, brilliant. Jan Hedger, Hello. Laurel Greville, <laughs> we've got, and Nikki Palmer. No, no Nikki Palmer, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have those, those open mics. Then we'll have a break about eight o'clock, and then we'll have. Charlie, Marilyn, Simon, Catrice, Simon's Michael. Oh, Simon said he was going to be late anyway. Okay. Jason, and of course, the man himself, Clive Oseman. So that's going to be a pretty good night. Who? So, who? <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the guy with the ginger hair sitting in the hair <laughs> oh, no. and glasses. <laughs> He hasn't got any silver foil on tonight. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay, Hi, I'm going to... Hi, Karen. Uh, who's coming in now? Karen. <laughs> Not giving too much away, but there's, there's one poem I'm going to do tonight that I actually feel it necessary now to leave a note on my door saying, I haven't come, mad. I'm performing on Zoom. Because <laughs> <laughs> your neighbours think you've gone mad. <laughs> They do. They must oh do. They oh must do. Hello, Karen. Hello. Hello. Hi, Karen. Okay. Now, Hi. we have a bit of a controversy here. Oh. Um, yes. in, some, in some Zoom uh, events, people like everybody to mute. And it is certainly true that if anybody's got anybody shouting in the background or a washing machine going, Karen, or a <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I did that all yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> or a barking dog or anything else, um, then please do mute. But actually, when people are performing, it's quite nice to hear a laugh, certainly for Clive when you finally, when he gets there. <laughs> Um, otherwise, he doesn't know whether he's working well or not. <laughs> I prom I prom I'm not going to tell everybody to mute, but if you do get some extraneous noise in the background, please do so. That would help everybody. Okay, so I'm going to start by... I'm going back to my book, which I, I did in 2019 and I haven't used it much at all. So I'm going to do a couple of little poems. One about insomnia, I found my glasses. It's called 1.33 a.m. 1.33 a.m. I'm sitting in the dimly lit sitting room. The fire is on, gas flames hissing warmth. <clears throat> Upstairs, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna have to do this again. Voice game. Okay, sorry about that. 1.33 a.m. I'm sitting in the dimly lit sitting room. The fire is on, gas flames hissing warmth. Upstairs, the rhythmic rumble of snoring. Some people can always sleep while others sit and count the boring dark hours till dawn lightens the sky. This is the reason I love the summer. When the dawn breaks as early as 3.30 a.m. and I can go for a walk to see the sunrise. The magic of a new day is no surprise to an old insomniac like me. But those that sleep like the just 
must always miss the hidden gems of roseate clouds and birds chorus, crumpled sheets and hot pillows for them, not the sweet smell of hay and damp grass, not the song of the lark as it rises from dark fields into bright skies. Okay. And when I can find it, so obviously I haven't used this book for a while because I can't remember where it is. Okay, some of you have heard this many, many times before, but there are people here who probably have never heard it. So I'm going to read Bare Feet Upon Bare Boards. We sit, bare feet upon bare boards, sand between the toes and on our arms, the damp tang of blown salt waves. I see tanned skin near the collar of your shirt, close to where your heart beats. I note the pulse at your throat and long to kiss it. I push my tangled hair from my eyes, our gaze meets, and for a second your white teeth shine within your smile. I laugh, and the sound of my voice is whisked away by the wind. I sit, bare feet upon bare boards, and feel your closeness. I love this hour, this closing of each day, the return from warm sands and frothing waves, a brief rest upon this dusty veranda before standing alone in my shower, dreaming of what might transpire when we meet again. Clean and smartly dressed, my hair tamed, your pressed shirt, the tie upon your chest. I will sit at the white table opposite you. The wine will flow dark red like my blood. I will nibble delicately and listen while your words tumble around me. And all I'll desire is to take the glass from between your resistant fingers and pass my lips across them. I want to take you in my arms and this time finish the day curled on the sheets of your bed, my cheek against your tussled head. Lovers at last. I do sit at the white table opposite you, but the wine that is poured is greenish white. I awake from my dream feeling slightly dazed and see your eyes scanning the room. They rest momentarily on every pretty girl but all I wish is that they would turn and focus on me so you could see this woman who loves you passionately. Thank you. Oh. Brava, brava. Thank you. Yes, well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, well, I think it's time to get on with our open mic and Brian Franco isn't here. So I'm going to ask somebody else from across the pond. Uh, Doc, would you be okay for starting us off on our open mic? Anadrosis. <laughs> would you like to give him a big hand for Doc Janning, please? Okay. I'm going to start with a future of unknowns. Shadows catch fire in fading light and stretch halfway to infinity, seeing in their blindness what we cannot, the new worlds, the old, the cities which never were. As time converges, diverges, and is before it is not weaving a future of unknowns from the detritus of the past. Yay. And 
poem the second is a short one. The language of earth speaks in infinite silent voice of philosophy and time, of beginnings and endings, and the beauty of the all. Oh, oh, is that it? Is that all of your I have one more I could read. Yeah, you could do one more because that was very, very short. Lovely, but short. Fragments of time. All our dreams, fragments of time, caught up in thought by endless days become voiceless memories. Unable to center, we walk out into life. Suddenly, from Stygian night, golden sun shines. Thank Lovely. you. Thank you, Doc. That was brilliant. Thank you for opening us with a really good three little poems. Brilliant. A big My hand book. for Doc Janning, please. Okay, Lucia, are you okay for going next? I think you've muted yourself. Are you all right to do that, Lucia? Yes. Brilliant. Uh, this night, uh, just one uh, short poem uh, was published by uh, uh, Plymouth University and Nottingham University on uh, their uh, art platform. So, Reality by Lucia de Ramos. The sky, the wind, the rain, paint a new poem about a different world, a world with fever and fear and anxiety in which the fever has power. Coronavirus, what a world with crown name inside, like a regal flower on our heads. But the reality, the reality is so, so undesirable. Life's rust turn to death. I am in a coffee shop in Stroud watching two people and the light is so yellowish, like pass in a sick tonsil. Men no longer smile in a deconstructed world, a deconstructed painting in a cubist style with shadows dead inside. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Lucia. That was brilliant. Thank you. Are you sure that's all you want to do tonight? Just this. <laughs> it's okay. enough. I am, I am so tired. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Another big hand for Lucia Daramus. Congratulations on having your poem published. Okay. Right. Well, we're moving on fast. Is um, Francesa here? I'm sure she came. She's, she's having problems joining, I think. All right, we'll leave her till later then. Um, okay, uh, Trevor, Trevor Valentine, would you like to go next, please? Big hand yes, please, for thank Trevor. you. Okay, um, I was itching to do this one, uh, but I couldn't because I submitted it um, for um, a, a competition, and I knew Josephine was was looking at them, so I couldn't let her know that it was mine. <laughs> But um, anyway, it's, it's, it is about the pandemic and um, it's called Renaissance. Like a new moon just beginning or a new flower just opening or a child stumbling to walk, I take fresh steps. Tucked away, I was hidden, cocooned, almost inert, peeping from under the warmth of a secured duvet. A phoenix wanting to survive and break free from a gripping madness and insanity, escaping from the would-be consuming covid fueled invisible embers, sometimes like a frenzied wasp. And now through the hordes I navigate my way, gel and spray and masks and paper towel, keeping my distance, tacking every few steps like a dinghy between a myriad of bouncing marker boys made out of similar, mostly hesitant, circumstep bodies emerging, every one a metamorphosis in new skin, 
all keeping alive, all breathing. And with time to reflect, I ponder, won't be promised a second coming. I admit in my foolishness, I was expecting just one body, one person, one live again Christ. But perhaps he was more clever, more subtle, more caring. He let us all be part of his second coming, en masse, united. Yes, we are all together in this, one rebirth, one renaissance. Wow, that's brilliant. Thank you, Trevor. It got an honourable mention, Josephine. Thank you. There you go. It's a good job you didn't do it last time, or we would have <laughs> I've had to have said, oh, I, I know who that is. I can't put it in. <laughs> I know. Okay. So brilliant. Um, have you another? Yes. Okay. So this is a bit special for me. And if you've been following um, on, on the website, um, you'll see that I'm so chuffed that my little grandson, who also bears my middle name, um, Valentine, um, has written his first poem and he's nine. So, um, oh, brilliant. I, I, I'm going to big him up. So that's, oh. uh, that, that's <laughs> him. He's got the pose. Nose. He See has it, the but... author's pose already. <laughs> well, that was taken in, that was taken in Gatlinburg, um, Catrice. That's probably not too far away from you, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Hello, um, so I want to share a screen if I may. Mm hmm. Uh, That's up to Jason. Are you doing okay there, Jason? Yes, it should, yeah. be, should be fine, yeah. Can you see it? Oh, yes. So that, that's the actual poem. Um, I thought that might be his handwriting, but it isn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that I would hoping, be good for nine. That would be very good, but unfortunately it wasn't. So this poem was in, uh, sort of in the style of uh, William Carlos Williams, who was American poet. Um, from 1860s, 1880s, sorry, through to 1963. Um, but he, he wrote in this style um, very much so. If you watch, if you see the red wheelbarrow, I think it's called, you'll see a very similar sort of format poem, but William, William did this to it, so there you go. Ideas of the future. So much depends upon a little boy's brain, thinking many good ideas that will make differences. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Tim. Yeah. I hope you feed back that he had a big applause. Yes, Ooh. thank you. And um, I, I'm sure if he, he's allowed to watch it on catch up, he'll be very chuffed and yeah. I've, I've filmed. Sorry? Kathy, who was that talking? It's me. I said I filmed it, so he sh he'll be able oh, to see. That's my daughter. Oh, right. oh gosh, you've got, you've got the whole family here. Welcome, welcome. So, jo <laughs> Josie's in Tennessee, so. Um, oh, yeah. brilliant! It's your son, is he? Yes. Yeah. Ah. And there's my there's my other grandson, Hank. <laughs> uh, where? Small. Anyway. Oh, there! I can see him. Yes, <laughs> he's having a drink. <laughs> oh, welcome. Welcome, Hank. That's fantastic. You're going to start them early, Trevor. Yeah, well, I, I'll be doing his po poem next week, so. OK, <laughs> glug, glug. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Big hand for Trevor and Woo! his grandsons and his family. And, and William, yeah. <laughs> OK, moving <clears> on, <throat> where should we go next? Laura, Laura Greville, are you happy to go next, please? Yes. yes. Big hand for Laura, please. <clears throat> I've got a work in progress called Ballad of Burg Rapottenstein. Up the Pehamsteig we pant through a forest that does slant, past grand dames of beach who dance on mossy limbs that peer askant. To whisper our arrival to old Rapotto, Lord of Kunring, Phantom who will decide which of eight gates he allows us enter or deny. No matter that we beseech with speech. My, now look there through the wood at one who was so good, Nepomuk 
strides and leathered hides, six foot flintlock at his side, hunting for Hirsch, his winter meat, while the peasant Franz dogs his master's steps to eat. We tiptoe now past granite boulders round like giants' heads. They likely watch us in those chinks. I did, did you see an eyelid blink? Across the old footbridge past a maple twin ascending high enough to see all sin. We scramble like forest floor mice up and along a hoary oak's tights. Touched, I'm sure, by boys Haimo and Elmar as they snuck to check their traps. And on through bright leaved ferns to turn and sight the Burg Rapottenstein's might. Ancient towers and walls betray no lines, though deep gray larch covers his time. Does the Borg hold those granite cheeks and jowls, or do those scowling igneous mounds hold it? They allow us pass, these wanton walls that could easy crush us with their dislike, as they billow out in sails that fill on winds at lofty heights. Yet ladies Gundula and Mechtild wave us enter to one after yet another gate and keep, we gasp at elegant graffito, over arched windows and horned skulls of great old beasts that adorn this intimate meeting feast. There walks Ezekiel and Wolfram to greet their guest, King Ottokar of Bohemia. He seeks their chest to ally against the Habsburgs. Oh, what moot to lend your hoot on such a bold and brazen quest that will send all to an exile's lonely searching death. Up we go to speak with Hieronymus, who shows us frescoes by Albine and Blasius, men well pleased to see their dainty daily scenes, not alarmed by rebel peasants, not torn by Catholic troops, not scorned by stubborn Swedes, who three times tried to ford this keep and three times left widows who weep. And here is Valburga to lead us to chapel, where Constantia and Apollonia do dapple the pews with prayers of chapel. And did you hear Hildegund call down the drafty passage to Kuchet beneath, where roars of fire heating soup of beef? And now hear the neigh, the horses of Ottokar's entourage and full dressage, who shout their cheer and gut sei mit ihr, that they have allies to tie to their hopes to greet an enemy's savage barrage. Though forever in the dungeons rattle bones and bleak that left their rot in icy sink in the bowels of Rappo, where aroma of soup and strength doth not reach. Oh, Haimo and Elmar, you young men, rash and reckless without fear, those rabbits cost dear, that you in traps on royal ground did set, not thinking you'd be met, caught fast and hard in your own net. And not even Una's pretty look, nor Ida's secret smile and schmuck would weigh to help you out and clear from that deep dreaded dungeon drear, because for 800 years, the weary geist of Burg, old Lord Rapotto, steinig und stur, has never let poor Menions hunt his moor. Woo! <clears throat> Fabulous, whoa! Wow, have you awesome. got? Have you got that in a book? Have you published that? No, think, no. Oh I don't my have goodness! Time to send things out. <laughs> that was fabulous. Yes. <laughs> I think that would be very. Um, is it? Is it Norwegian? Is it Norwegian or is it? It's um, Central European because I I like these calendars that always have a lot of saint names for each day. And right. I thought there were so many wonderful old names that you usually don't hear much anymore. You don't? Um, and so I made a list of some and 
I had been to this castle once and I decided to try to make one that would put all a lot of names in anyway. And so that's really what came out. And well done for the performance too, pr yeah. pronouncing them brilliantly too. A really big hand for Laura Greville, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brilliant. Hey, well, um, have we got Andrew still on here? No. Um, Francesa, has she managed to get back yet? No. Okay. Um, and Brian Franco hasn't come. Jan Hedger. Hi. Would yeah, that's like fine. To... I can go. Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> nice to see Hello. everybody for my first and time. You. What a jolly lot you yeah. are. <laughs> it's good. You uh, haven't got to the end yet. <laughs> um, I've been in quite enjoying Zoom workshops as well as open mics, and um, I've got two from recent workshops. Brilliant. Um, the first one is from a Word Stafford workshop run by Mel Wardle Woodend. Yeah. Stillness of song. The ha hugs contour of Abadur Bay clings like limpets in salted air, damp salt that clogs a selkie's hair as she's washed limpidly to rocky shore. The har distorts her from human's view, settles upon her wet greyness of seal, secrets the ocean will never reveal of its temptress's seductive melody. Ocean creeps, laps Selkie's feet, tethering her in its ultimate control. Tentacle waves possess her soul. Shh, 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 sleep, sleep. Um, and just to explain yeah. the, the heart, the heart is a wet, damp, cold mist of the north sort of sea coast and having lived in Scotland, the north of Scotland for seven years, um, you know I experienced it many it. times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I love the use of the sounds at the end of the poem. Yeah, that very, they came after the clear. workshop. I, I, yeah, yeah, I thought it needed something else. Thank you. Oh. And this one is, um, well, actually, it's, it's partly where I first came across, across Clive's name, because I think he was in the Poetry Slam with Emma Pursehouse and Steve Pottinger at Ironbridge. Um, and I saw his name pop up here, and hence I joined you. Ah, um, and this was one of their workshops, um, looking at characterisation and um, that word I can't say. I'm an at a pair. That one. On the mat a pair. That's the one. <laughs> it's called Tick Tock, Tick Tock. She was a bum of a woman. You never knew when she would go off. Mm -hmm. Simmer first, eyebrows arched like a cat. If she had a tail, it would be stiff, carried high as the smirking ruler waiting to come cracking down on the unfortunate's hand. Palms for girls, knuckles for boys, before sexism was the go word. Whack, smack, thwack, ring, zing, oh, sting. Quiet crying, sniffles with snotty nose and loud keening, like a wolf split from its pack. Hard looks from the Hawk Street gang and a few wet knickers. With a march of a sergeant major in a twin set and a face set in 60s concrete was when the murmuring and scraping on the parquet floor would stop dead. Miss Jones demands silence. Brilliant. That I love wonderful. it. Thank you. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad you came and joined us. Yes. <laughs> wow. Hopefully yeah, we'll see you again. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Another big hand for Jan Hedger, please. Brilliant. Okay. Oh, we've got Special K. Hi, Special K. And Francesa, you've managed to get in. Brilliant. Would you like to do your open mic? 
you're muted. Can you hear me? Uh, me, Francesca, are you talking to me? Yeah, Francesca. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm probably pronouncing it wrongly. I do apologize. You've got it right. Okay. Um, I'm sorry about today. I really have had a time trying to get my internet and computer to hook up. To oh. What happened? Never done that before. And I was like, what's happening here? So thank oh, you for dear. being patient with me. And That's fine. Like you said, um, I'm ready, sort of ready. Um, I don't have my pieces I had in front of me for a second, but I had to kind of move around. So they're not right here in front of me, but I can Do you want me to ask you in a little while? Yeah, that would probably be better. Okay, that would be fine. That would be fine. Um, okay, well, I'm just wondering, as a couple of people haven't come who've been on the special K, would you like an open mic slot? You're muted, special K. You're muted. You're muted. Hello. <laughs> Would you like a, an I'm sorry, open mic guys, slot? My mom called me. Did you just call on me to um to go? Hello. <clears throat> I sorry. think Josephine's saying yes. Yes, okay. sorry, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call you like this, but I did call you. <laughs> no, my, my mom called me like this. And I was like, I gotta go, mom, mom, I gotta go. Ma and she just kept talking and I missed. So I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. Would you like an open mic slot? <laughs> I would, I would. And are you okay to do it now? Or would you like me to get back to you? I can do it now. Brilliant. A big hand to Special K, everybody. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, um, let's see. A few weeks ago, I had this conversation. But if I'm being honest, it was more like a confrontation. See, you kept asking and demanding of me, what did I get from being on this here stage? And every answer I gave just wasn't good enough and didn't seem to satisfy your curious eye. And I began to wonder if this were the place where you determined if I was qualified to share the light with the likes of you. And I went home that night and I knew. I knew that I had to break up with words. See, I didn't sign up to be your player number two in this unforeseen game with its ever-changing rules, but come morning's light, I realized I could stop breathing easier than I could walk away from words. You see, I fell in love with words before I ever even knew what love was, and Words and I have a bond that goes way back. In fact, my mama said I never stopped talking once I learned how. That's the kind of relationship words and I have. And words teaches me things like how to be angry eloquently and beautiful before they ever even see me coming. Words taught me how to wield this double-edged sword and how to hold my shield. Careful, not too high, cause you gotta remember to protect the important parts, like your heart. Because sticks and stones may break your bones, but words, oh, they'll hurt you. Words taught me that love is a verb in action and words who introduced me to paper and pen and where words is my best friend paper and pen my lover and we all live together in a world where threesomes do exist and in fact it's quite the normal thing to do words he doesn't sugarcoat things and words she gives it to me straight but words lets me pretend that I am a princess and I live in a castle and my Prince Charming waits somewhere just beyond the gates. But at the end of the day, when I am still lonely, words is there waiting for me. Words waits patiently 
And when words is choked by tears before words has a chance to speak, words doesn't get angry. Words knows. Words will breathe again. Words. Words says things like, why are you crying, girl? You are no doormat, girl. Pick your head up, girl. They are no better than you, girl. Words. Sometimes I wonder if paper and pen get jealous of this thing that words and I have become because I fell in love with words before I ever even understood what love was. And late at night, when words and I stare up at the same nighttime sky, wishing we may, wishing we might have whatever wish we wish tonight, I wish for words to have fallen in love with me before words knew what love was. Thank you. Woo! Great. Woo! Brilliant. And okay. is it your music that you put on in the background? Oh, no. Um, sorry. It's nap time. <laughs> and um, <laughs> every... <laughs> we listen Weirdly. To <laughs> Weirdly, <laughs> it worked. I mean, it, did. it really did. It <laughs> yes, it did. It did. I forgot that it was on, and I was like, "Oh, I know." I didn't want to be like telling it to stop in the middle, so I just let it's it fine, go. That's fine. I was a little worried it was somebody else, but then I realized it was coming from you, and I thought you'd done it deliberately, and it made your poetry even better. So <laughs> that's fantastic. Awesome. Please, the special K is always brilliant. Thank you. Um, Francesa, are you ready yet? Would you be able to do it now? Brilliant. Would you yeah. stand for Francesa, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I have only Spartan Peaches. This is kind of a time thing I like to read during this time of year because it's a little bit spooky, but not really spooky. Oni Spartman peaches. Oni Spartman picked a bucket of juicy peaches in church. She listened always as the preacher preaches. Oni would stay up late every night, reading her Bible by candlelight. One night, something was not quite right. No one could see Oni's candlelight. That night before supper, Oni Spotman said, I believe I'll eat these peaches until I'm dead. Oni Spotman ate the whole bucket, enjoying every bite. The next morning, they found Oni Spotman dead, the bucket of peaches at her head. If only Oni Spotman wouldn't have, would have just went to bed. All that was left was a pile of peaches at her, peach pit at her head. Poor Oni Spotman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you have another? Is that it? I do. I have some in that same dialect. I have another one called uh, Southern Defect that a lot of people really like. And so, uh, okay. I took off my hat. Just look at my heart. I ran my pantyhose again in two places. Scuffed up my pocketbook on that brick wall over there. Mama calls me a hot mess on a Sunday morning. Been out trolloping all Saturday night. We get to the breakfast table. Grave is getting cold. Oh, law. Grandma don't pump them biscuits again. Yes, it's oats again today. My poor stomach will be a growling. The preacher hates that sound. Every time he hears it growl, he goes into a summit and yells out how Jesus brought his disciples together to feed fish to the multitudes. I'm a southern defect. My whole family raises their hands every Sunday. Southern defects can't wait till Monday morning to do it all again. Woohoo! <laughs> that was brilliant. Clive, I think you've got some competition here. 
<laughs> brilliant. Thank you very much, Francesa. That was brilliant. Another big hand for Francesa. Okay, we're getting close to our um, to our break. But actually, I see David Ralph Lewis there, and I haven't got you down on my open mic list, David. So do you want an open mic? Uh, yeah, sure. I forgot to sign up, so that's why I wasn't on the list. Ah, uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, there's a couple who haven't turned up. Otherwise, we might have not heard from you today, which would be a shame. So please, big hand for David Ralph Lewis. Feeling tired, syncopated, full of mildew, worn down by the continual catastrophes, sorrows and disappointments of late capitalism? Why not try product? The revolutionary new way to do anything. Product <laughs> is easy and convenient. Product comes in three sizes, is easy to clean, easier to sharpen, features 15 replaceable parts, no longer emits strange singing in ancient languages from unseen speakers, smells faintly of fireworks from your childhood, will give you more time to do the things that you love, like billiards, social distancing or grave digging. Products <laughs> will turn you more be beautiful, smarter and less socially awkward when meeting people you don't know. Product will transform your body with no effort required on your part. Product will comfort you when you are sad, will listen when no one else is able to. When you awake at three in the morning, heart thumping as if it wants to break free of your chest, thoughts like a runaway train, train, disasters unfolding on the inside of your eyelids, product will hold you as you shake, stroke your hair until you drift and become snow. Your life was a still lake before product. You are trapped in a grey cloud without detail. Product is the answer to questions you didn't know you had. Product is comfort and peace finally gained. Product is a warm embrace of light, a release from gravity. Is your jaw unclenching after grinding your teeth to dust for years? Product <laughs> costs. Everything does. Buy product today at all places. Warning, do not ingest, compress, bless, or stress product. Ter terms and conditions apply. By purchasing product, you agree to constant monitoring, analysis, and distribution of, of your blood type, your nightmares, your emotion, and your diary entries. The manufacturer does not accept any liability for mal manufacture of product or if it sparks, maims, or forgives. If it empties your bank account or breaks up your marriage, do not expose product to the harsh realities of everyday life. The product may be, be sharp or hot and unpleasant to touch. Product will never save you, however much you want it to. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thanks, Have you another or are you finishing on that note? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think I'm done, done after that. Okay, well, it's a great <laughs> note to end on. Brilliant. Thank you, David Lauf Ralph Lewis. Big hand for David. That was fabulous. <laughs> Watch out, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's five to eight, everybody. And I think we're gonna have our break now. Um, we'll get back at five past eight because we've got some several really great people coming up on the open mic in the second half. So I think it'd be good to have our break now if everybody's happy with that. Yep. Cool. Yeah, you can unmute and chat or you can shut your videos off and go off and do whatever you need to do and we'll meet back here at five past eight brilliant thank you thank you everyone kathy do you not want to be seen today <laughs> hey special k that was awesome this okay. is catrice thank you hey how are you I'm good. Looking good, girl. I like that hair. Thank you. It's my birthday due. It's my birthday due. Boop, boop. Happy <laughs> birthday. Thank you. Not till Friday, but I'm celebrating all month, week, everything. Absolutely. <laughs> is there is there any other way to do it? <laughs> um, That's right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday for this week, then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good idea, actually, to have a week's birthday. Great. Yeah, I mean, the um, the Mad Hatters did it in Alice in Wonderland. They celebrated every day. That's true. 
Yes. My very, very fun birthday. <laughs> if you want to be a Mad Hatter, join Special K. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to, as a kid, um, my birthday nearly always fell on half term in at the end of May. And uh, so I nearly always had a week off for my birthday, right through college, everything. Oh, and when so I got to work and realized that I had to go to work on my birthday, that seemed like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you have a great day when you get there. I'm going to disappear for a minute. And... Okay. Hey, Francesca, are you actually in the South? I can't hear you. Yes, that's okay. I am. I'm actually in the south, and I actually went to church a lot with, um, with a lot of people. You know, like um, whenever I was young, my grandmother she was a Sunday school teacher. So my great grandmother sometimes would burn the biscuits. She would get upset. She said, "We can't eat the biscuits," and then we just have to eat oatmeal. So sometimes, like some of these things are slightly happening, and other times they are like things that I've taken from that era mm -hmm. that sort of came down to me. Oh um, no, I totally get it. I what? totally get it. My my grandmothers are the same the same way. And I was just like, wow. Like I was yeah. listening to you and I was like, that's like really spot on. And then your accent too, I was just like, um if she is not from the South, she is like, woo. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, I, you said so trollop that, that made way. my life that was like <laughs> bring that brought back so much as when you said trollop my family i have family from north carolina and i was like did she just say trollop i was like nobody says that except southerners that's it and, and that's another that. thing yeah i like to say I, I haven't written anything yet but they always used to say something was going to happen till kingdom come yes, yes. Till kingdom come. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh my goodness. It was hilarious. Hilarious. I I mean, um, yeah, so so yeah, I mean, I think there's something out there for this. I mean, talking back to people that don't talk that way anymore. Um, I'm glad you did it because it, yeah. it a lot of those people are gone now. And I, mm. you know, I live now in Nashville, Tennessee, but back there in the Kentucky Hills, it's it's really, you know, it's a it's a thing. People will talk about all these different things and I remember them and I, I'm i really trying to work on a few more pieces like especially the haunted ones because I didn't really want to be scared of anything but they had a booger man and they also had a bunch of other things and you know this time of year is kind of a cool time of year to think back about how they used to you know talk and try to have you you know a little, little scared but not real scared but then also to uh, mm -hmm. some of the preachers that would preach and preach and preach and preach and you never got home to eat. So that's why I was like, oh my goodness, you know, my stomach's going to be growling until like one or two o'clock in the afternoon because they're never going to get, you know, stop preaching and you cannot leave while the preacher is preaching. You have to wait to meet him at the end. Anyway. That's right. Thank Gotta wait for the Kate. benediction. That's Thank right. <laughs> oh my gosh. That oh, brings that's so true. Memories. Like, growing up, Sorry, y'all, I just ate a piece of chocolate. But um, my grandfather and my grandmother, it was like, we would go to church at like, okay, so we'd have to be there before everybody else because my grandfather opened the church. And um, so we would get there like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. And then we'd have Sunday school. Then we'd have a snack. And then we'd have church. Then we wouldn't even go home for dinner. We had like dinner at church. 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 And then had more church. Oh my gosh. So you talking about that is just like, that's my life. Like, oh, all wow. day. <laughs> yes. Your whole Sunday, all day was church. All day. Right. Oh. oh my goodness. And I have a poem, but um, it's called The Late Great Aunt Ruth. But I was so hesitant to share it with people because um, and then I have one about, well, that, that, that aunt is from North Carolina because a significant part of my mom's family is from North Carolina uh, here in the States. And then the other part of her family is from the Cayman Islands. And I, I have several poems that are written 
in dialect from both side, parts of that family. But I've always been so hesitant to read it because you never know. I, I wasn't sure if my accent, the acquired accent was dead on, but the memories are, and they're so important for us to, like Francesca was saying, to capture because times are changing, generations are changing. And all of that, all of that language, all those accents, all of those colloquial phrases are, they're evolving too and they're getting lost. And I, I love that she did that. That just, I love that poem so much. Keep going girl, love it. I'll say thank, thank you Catrice. Thank you so, so very much. Um, I do other poetry too, but that was just one of the things that people keep telling me, you are gifted at that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I mean, you know, there, I even entered some of the Southern Appalachian contests because I was told that, you know, you need to look, look toward uh, the Appalachian women projects because that's where you, you know, your family are from. And, you know, I just mm -hmm. sort of, we left when I was a kid, but still I uh, came back on every summer and had to use that, you know, church area and, or at least saw all this, this, these things, all these things come to pass. And like I said, you, you were right. If we don't keep it, we will lose it. We will lose culture for us, you know, and we all need it. You need it. You know, everybody around here needs to keep it. And thank you. Amen. You're Catrice, welcome. Catrice, yes. Yes. you could always try one here. Uh, I will work up the courage. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Peer pressure from Virginia. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will brush them off and uh next time i will i will give it a go <laughs> okay you're on <laughs> okay about another two or three minutes and then we'll start off again hi uh, catrice yes hi, i just been in to tell howard you're on here he's on another um zoom poetry evening at the moment he said to say hi <laughs> oh hi howard Please send He's my salutations nice to him too. You better say hi to him from all of us. Yes. <laughs> I will do him afterwards. Okay. You two are the wonder team. We have two wonder teams, Marilyn and Howard and um, Peter and Josephine. I just think that's tops. I love it. I'm, he, <laughs> yes, true. Yeah, mm. two, win, two wonder teams. <laughs> uh, right. Okay, I'm going to get going again. Um, I'm going to ask, is Charlie back yet? Yeah. Charlie, would you like to start us off on the second half, please? I would, and it's lovely to be back at an open mic. Um, Good. I've been away from open mics a bit recently, so um, it's great to be here. So a big hand for Charlie Mark, quick, everybody. Nice to see you, Charlie. Thank you, Lucia. OK, so I have three short poems. One was written during the summer during lockdown and the other two were written recently when I was in France. So the first is called The Path from Slad to Miserden. Cotswold Stone, the foundation of my youth, a childhood found on honeyed rock, familiar, secure. In these strange and unconnected times, I'm rooted to this wall. I watch the ants pursue their lives amongst lichen dribbled plateaus tiny sentience, inscrutable in their purpose. Distancing is in their nature, not in ours. From the wall, the feast of green, the valley stretched out at my feet, sways shimmering in summer heat. Mid these noisome virus-driven days, quiet talk bridges fissures that isolation brings. A narrow path lined with random blocks crafted to fit together as those that cope the wall. Words pave the way in this crazy world. Later, walking in the landscape, that luscious crust that wraps the limestone rock, we lie back in the green and shade, savour grass and leaf and amicable talk. The second is called Hidden Edge. 
The edge between the sheer blue sky and mountainside rippled unexpectedly. At first I thought the heat. There is no shading on the path between stone and ocean waves. A second look ferments unease. Dawning comprehension chills my mind. It's falling rock and avalanche. Hold my hand, I shout, as solid path begins to rock and buck. She turns to clutch my arm. Too late, my horror grows. So does hers as slowly, inexorably, she slips towards the edge. I lunge, an empty gesture, as her body slides away. Eyes wide, she tries to anchor just with sight. No hope. I wake in tears, the dream so vivid, terrifying, brutal loss. We've had a hearty morning meal, scrambled eggs, juice and cheerful chat, but still her screams rattle round my mind. The dread still squeezes me inside. And lastly, glowing embers. Toulouse sausage curls up and purrs atop the fire pit. Tasty steaks doze there by its side. And then fresh tomatoes, a gift from Jano, roll by to bake. We sit and eat this gorgeous fare. Al, my Lucia, Chris, Flor, Jospin and myself. Considering past days, pleased with all the work we've done. With barrows, sand and 6,000 little blocks, a patio to sit on to proclaim the bounty of good friendship, hard work and so much fun. Into the hot tub then, steaming water attacks our weary frames, beating off the tiredness, loosening our limbs. Soon I'm left alone, just me and the beauty of the night. The old church bell marks another day. Above the crystal sky glitters, Milky Way, like the sand today, scattered on the paving stones to fill the cracks to make a hole. And all the while, wood smoke scents the gentle air, filling me with peace and gratitude. Thank you. Whoa. Nice one, Charlie. Brilliant poem. Wow. Thank you. That's Thank amazing. You, Charlie. That was amazing. And I don't think I'd heard any of those. They're all new, are they? <laughs> Pretty new, yeah. Brilliant. I think they're fabulous. Thank you. Another big hand for Charlie Mark Quick, everybody. Okay, uh, next up we have Marilyn. Marilyn, would you like to do your open mic? Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, last time I saw Catrice, I think I reduced her to tears. So <laughs> I better not do another of those. <laughs> This is the Phoenix and me. There were a fire on railway embankment a week ago Tuesday, unless I mistook. So, being a public spirit in Wasning, I hopped over the fence for a look. I find a rock was seen to have ruptured, fire and smoke pouring out through the crack. When I bent to look into the flames, I saw another red eye looking back. Well, I knew what I'd found in an instant. My mythology was always tray bon. I pulled the sleeve of my coat down over my hand, held out my arm, said, hop on. The phoenix ruffled its flaming red feathers, then reached out with a tentative claw. Just as my jacket started to smolder, the heavens opened again with a roar. Poor old phoenix, she nearly got drowned. All the flames in her feathers went foot. So I tucked her under my coat and I stashed her at home with me hens in me hut. Twice the size of a very small chicken, she was not quite the pet I'd have chose. She ate all of the food that I offered and the skin off the end of my nose. So I asked my new pal how she got here. We looked up, we locked eyes and I suddenly knew as how she'd pecked a hole in the space-time continuum and somehow she just wriggled through. I didn't mean to sleep late the next weekend. When the wife woke me, she said, I had a hunch, young bird in the pen looked right peaky. So I stuck it in them for lunch. Well, I suffered a grim premonition, raced down the stairs with intent, turned my face away from the sight of my friend and the gas up as high as it went. 
as the phoenix were reincarnated. She rose in a massive fireball, which exploded the oven all over the room, and the fridge ended up in the hall. So then I thought it were prudent to make myself scarce for a wink. So I popped the bird into a bucket and legged it down to railway to think. By God, but that bird were a beauty. Yes, I wanted to keep her, it's true. But my thoughts turned to the wife of me bosom on what she would say when she knew. The bird had to go, I decided, quite rightly when it all said and done. Love like ours is probably frowned on, but I have to admit, it's been fun. <laughs> Poor Phoenix found it a bit of a struggle to return to the place of her birth, for the sage and onion stuffing had considerably altered her girth. She sucked in her tummy, lunged forward, found her exit route still really tight. Her feathers set fire to some brambles. Soon the whole blessed bank were alight. We could hear police sirens in distance. Time to skedaddle by gum. I picked up a convenient branch from the hedgerow and shot the phoenix back when she come. <laughs> it quite broke my heart when I lost her before I'd even discovered her name. A premature end to a hot love affair reduced my phoenix to just an old flame. Then I thought as I made my way homewards, that old kitchen will ne'er be the same. It was a wife who put Phoenix in Tubman. I can guess who'd be taking the blame. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. That's weird. Uh, that was so good, so funny. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> It's 60 years since I left Manchester, but I really can't read that without <laughs> Manchester accent <laughs> <and> creeping in. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Marilyn. Can I have another big hand for Marilyn's fabulous poem, please? <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Okay, <laughs> who's going to follow that? Um, Simon, Simon Aldwick, would you do your open mic now, please? Yeah, yeah. Um, Big hand for Simon. I am going to read this uh, anthology, the break anthology from I Flash. Right. So my poem in this, it's called I Think It's Broken. Ah! What? How, 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 how? What happened? I, I, I think I broke something. Where? Here. Hmm. Does this hurt? Holy Mother of Christ, yes. Yes, yeah, definitely broken. <laughs> so yeah, you can get that in the break anthology with I Flash 12 poems. Oh, 12 congratulations poems. for being published in that. That was brilliant. So this is a uh, one I'm going to do now. This is, um, <clears throat> I've had a very bad year, as I'm sure a lot of people have, and um, things have helped me to get through this year. One is poetry. And the other one is pork scratchings. Um, so I've, I've been inspired by pork scratchings to write this poem. So um, it's a bit more serious than the other one. It's called Crackling. You sounded really crackly on the phone this morning, he said, which was no wonder because I've been eating crackling a lot. Comfort eating, the feel, the sound, the taste. But before I knew it, I became crackling myself. If I move too quick, my joints, if I speak, my words, everything I do cracks before me. But it's all good, just don't step on those cracks. Because if you crack a crack, there's no going back. My heart, my head, my words, time falls under my bed. I crack through history like a machine gun rattle. I find an empty bag, oh, I find an empty packet, lick the bag, salt fills my universe, my tears flood every ocean. Oh, brilliant. Ooh. That was really Lovely. Great. Lovely, Simon. Well done. Oh. Well crafted. Well done. Very oh, well man. crafted and also very well performed. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Simon Oldwick. Another big hand for Simon Oldwick, please. Gosh, what a rich night we're having. I mean, goodness me, can it get any better? 
it might do because we're going to ask Catrice Greer next, please. <laughs> Ooh, from Baltimore. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. So I'm going to read, uh, I have three, but I'll read two. And if you are pleased, then in this time, I'll read the third. But um, um, the first two are love poems. Uh, so I've had time to decompress during uh, COVID. And this first one is about letting someone go and the memories of that. And if I learn to love you as if we are one, tethered, trailing the force of past lives, particles in equal mass, we orbit, weightless, balanced in our darkness, feel the cool shade of the moon, and with a turn, we are serious, pre-dawn, pulsing east stars, lighting through our darkest enmeshed hurt. You still live in the marrow of my bones. My soul, she holds you close. Closed is our once love, our once life. Astral traveling, jettisoning the axons, constellations, our dark bodies, shadowed selves, a living galaxy in lost potential, permanently etched, inscribed in the incubated darkness. You call me by my name, and as always, I follow. We meet in my dreams, night after night, breath by breath, side by side, soul by soul, you lead, I follow. And I love you, boundless as always, in the place where time, space, regret, shame and sorrow don't matter. And it is just us. Thank you. Brilliant. <coughs> Beautiful. And this second one is about new love, receiving new love. And it's called Under the Crescent Moon Blows the Wind. Is it possible? that in the frequency you found in me, the grounded parts of yourself, thundering, whole, uncracked. Open circuits, fused, broken by distorted, unsafe currents, back in safe mode, kundalini coiled, waiting. You found me, awakened, fluttered, atrial, beating ohms, Feeling for you in this virtual space, pulses speaking our ebbs, flows, synergies blown through, amplified, crested in our pixelated silences. We see better, we get closer. You've written your ballad into me. Call and response. Could it be me, lyrical, etched into this time again, entwined? You sing the song, my electrified marrow's been waiting to hear, gather itself. And it is written on the inside of me, growled in an echo serenading deep in the night that sings me to sleep, pulsating a lullaby rocking me sound. We can't say our goodbyes, no, not this time. We've only just said a lifetime of hellos. I need you here in the crests and the troughs, riding high, pinned low, blown through, boundless in this digital hyperspace, shuttling past hurts, no night or day, no need for time or to keep pace with light. We ride this current, twin energies synced. We recognize our hurts, combined altitudes, we go counterclockwise higher. And I hear the crackle of you astral traveling, feel you gust through me in the night. You're electric on my tongue, I taste you. And you touch me when you think I cannot hear you thinking me there. Three-dimensional seduction, uncoiled, elevated, vibrating. 
you find your way inside me willingly unbraced, ungrounded, where we sing our songs, electronic duets, time travelers across oceans, time, space, channeled, charged. Thank you. That was really beautiful, really beautiful. I'd love to see these on a page and read them. I just so much want to see. Yes, because that one has a word play like Hertz is some of some of the Hertz are H-U-R-T-S and then others are H-E-R-T-Z playing with frequency oh, words. Yes, that's what uh, I was wondering, actually. I had caught something like that. So, yeah, this is where you would need to see it to understand everything, you know, deeper. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Catrice. Thank Can you. I have a big hand for Catrice. Great. Thank you. Always lovely. Always great poetry. Um, okay, moving on. Can we have Michael Breen if he's here, please? Michael, have you got home and uh, relaxed enough now? Indeed, I have. Indeed, I have. So welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's my first time attending this event. Thank you for the warm welcome. Heard nothing but amazing poetry so far. Hoping I can add to that tally. Now, recently I wrote a trilogy of poems called The Good Soldier. I got the basic idea after reading an essay which my wife wrote analysing the Wilfred Owen war poem, Disabled, as well as watching the movie Full Metal Jacket by Stanley Kubrick, which is a real favourite of mine, and thinking back over the experiences of two of the soldiers in that movie, Joker and Pyle. <clears throat> so this is going to be divided into three parts. It's called The Good Soldier. Part one, the good soldier, noble and stoic, cares not for the imperialist agenda drawn up in darkly lit war rooms that pulled him far from home and haven into a world of undying danger, peril that knows not day nor night, surrenders not to the clack of a freshly punched card, doesn't cease for days most sacred and holy, and tires not under the endless mass of days, weeks, and months lost to the terror. He neither condones nor condemns, but quietly follows orders, braving craven hell fire from a hidden hand that would otherwise shake his. An enemy by default, only cast in the role by political lines and pure blind chance, marking off the desperate days and yearning for another. When the mortar fire will give way to jubilant shooting stars. End of part one, thank you. Without further ado, here is part two. So we're going, this is a sequel and a prequel to that first part. So go between the battlefield and boot camp. There it suddenly lies in a tightly coiled pile beneath his bunk, as clear as the day he left it, save for the dried tears that chased it from his soul, his humanity shied away in the wake of bombastic corporal bellowing and frozen silent by a blanket party beating, replaced by a vacant stare fit for a thousand yards, laden with bloodshed, screams and death. For war has no use in the thing he left behind. He vows to reclaim it once the last shell is cold on the ground, become a man of compassion once more, 
but this is his last night on the island, and fear's memory would keep him far from its mausoleum of terrors, so he can but hope that it will find him when the last errant mortar falls far from his gaze of ice. It's the end of part two. Woo. And just to put a bow on it, this is the good soldier, part three. <clears throat> the good soldier, now gone so long that the danger zone is now his home. And the haven he left behind is nothing but a faraway land in both geography and memory. He once marked off the days, punching his card with the fall of each empty clip. Yet the conflict replenishes in equal rapidity to the fallen ammunition. For while enmity is finite, this is an election year. He accepted long ago that the life he knew was lost to yesterday and now rues the days unblemished by firefight. For a day without blood to him is like a day without sunshine. Now favoring the sight of mortars over the sparkle of shooting stars, his country has forgotten him, yet he plows along regardless because he stopped fighting their war long, long ago and began in earnest to mount his own. Thank you, thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Michael. Well, welcome. Yes, that was brilliant. I, I'm, again, it would be good to, to actually be able to read that because I'm sure it's quite complex and to get everything you would need to read it on the page. So brilliant. Well done. Oh, well, thank you. Hand for Michael Free, please. Okay, so we come. Jason, are you around somewhere? Yes, I'm here. Oh, yes. I've got so many, and it's your glasses. You see, I can't recognize you with glasses on yet. <laughs> Would you like to do a poem, please? Right, okay. So um, last night I watched the new David Attenborough uh, Life on Our Planet documentary, which almost brought me to tears. And I'm, uh, um, I'm an eco-poet at heart. So this one um, kind of reflects my feelings. It's called The Inhuman Condition. Too many people crave convenience in a blind cult of busy with a powerful drunk on quick wins and mass profit in a finite race, saying they care but being twin faced. This is a time where the meek, ill and poor are simply ignored. When leaders place bets on political scores and people without a home are forced to sleep on concrete floors. A time when lies are spoken openly as the truth, when facts become fake, when insults replace discussion and compassion as old fashioned. Forests are severed from the ground all around the globe, bringing needless death to sentient species and new discoveries never to be found. Seas and rivers brimmed full of choking plastic, only an issue when it starts to poison us with people too busy to pick up the litter or recycle their stuff. Hedgerows cut down for crops to be piled high in waste heaps, deemed too natural to be sold, and chemicals kill pests while sending bees to their deaths. Meat is wrapped in cellophane, sanitised to hide its bloody source, and baby cows are orphaned, taken from their mothers by force. The world's top predator selfishly looks out for itself, foolishly believing it has the right to end life and bend nature to its will as we hurtle round a course that will not end well. But one thing is for sure, if we continue our inhuman condition, we will tip the balance and wipe each other out. To that there's no doubt. Perhaps that's our destiny, to be remembered by our Earth Mother as a species that made the planet ill, a slow poison until we'd had our fill. There are many that do care, that fight to change our minds, face danger and risk their lives. The life to give a damn, to make the world a better place and demand a better plan. We need you all to listen and learn to love again, not just each other, but every creature 
and live in harmony with nature to keep our trees unfelled. The wheel must be broken in a race of endless need until we learn to follow our hearts, dig out our painful history and replant with hopeful seeds. Or will be the cancer that kills its ever giving host, a world lost forever and nothing left to toast. Will earth be a spinning ball of dust haunted by our ghosts? Nature's abundant chain is broken with us the weakest link. We must run towards a drastic change, not race us to the brink. We all have a choice to make, so what's yours? There's not much time to think. I for one choose life, not making us extinct. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, time for one more? Yep. Cool. Uh, so um, on a happier note, hey. um, I was fortunate enough to go to Scotland uh, just after the lockdown um, was, uh, was um, eased. And this is just my time uh, in a place called Melness. And it's called Melness Sunset. The pilled cooling land gently slopes and rises like a freshly aired linen sheet, rippled across an endless cushioned bed. Shimmering white rocks break the undulating curves of a brocaded heath, buttoned by fluffed cotton grass tufts. Sponge-like mounds of moss, lichen and heather spring inquisitive wanderers, giants across islands. Stroking winds make grass roll, tidal-like, sending silvery snakes to wind towards the hem of blowing hills. Sunset draws down a violet damask drape to peach and lemon folds that snug a rusted aubergine landscape. Not long now for the circling sun to rest beneath this rich, lustrous fabric of the moon's speckled sequin quilt. This ever-giving Celtic land, tucked by the brush of the North Sea, is a waking dream of the wild and will always lie with me. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Jason. That was lovely. Wow. Can I have Beautiful. another big hand for Jason Conway, please? We're fast coming towards our zenith. Hope you're ready, Clive. Peter, would you like to do a poem? I see you've got the upside down trawler behind you. Well, it's the only way I could get it on the thing is by putting this <laughs> sideways, you know. Um, those of you that don't know, the trawler 2020 is uh, uh, over the last, between January 2018 and uh, June, no, January 2019 and June, end of May 2019, we selected poems from uh, poems that have been posted on the G Cross Poetry Society um facebook pages and uh um these are you know not necessarily the best poems but they've had something that jumped out at us uh, some are by erudite poets and some are by people just starting out so and there's a hundred poems in there from 47 poets uh if you're a member of the gloucestershire poetry society fellowship you get a free copy um otherwise you need to buy it um so there's a number of people here tonight that are actually in this book. Trevor Valentine, myself actually, um, Simon Aldwick's in it, Josephine's in it, Charlie's in it, Marilyn's in it, uh, yeah. Sally's in it, Clive's in, in it, it. Lucia. Lucia, Lucia's in it, Jason's in it. Uh, Is Simon's in it? Simon who? Aldwick. Yeah, I said Simon. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah, so... <laughs> And uh, the Trawler 2021 is is currently being uh, 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 trawled, and that runs from the 1st of June 2020 to 31st of May 2021, and that will come out next September. Uh, so great. keep posting, folks. So if you post on the Gloucestershire, <laughs> if you're a member of the Gloucestershire, you can join the Gloucestershire Poetry Society for nothing, just to access the group pages. Uh, you have to just agree to the terms and conditions. Uh, and uh, but if you pay an extra bit up till the end of this year, twelve pounds to join the fellowship, you get loads of benefits, uh, including those, a free copy, including a free copy of the trawler. Not which is well worth having. I've been reading it this afternoon. You had to be a mem <laughs> yes. you had to, your membership had to be current as of the thirtieth of September this year. So yeah. 
Uh, from January, the membership will go up to £18, so it's going to go up. But if you join before Christmas, you get a whole year of £12. Wow, what a bargain. Yeah, and, it, and it gives you entry into the competitions. So there Two you go. Two competitions, yeah. Competitions, yeah. Okay, so uh, as, as uh, Clive's here, I, I wrote this. Uh, it was in my um, uh, poetry book, Still Tilting at Windmills, from 2018. And um, it's called The Last Post, and I'm going to read this because Clive's with us tonight. Some of you would have heard it, and some of you may not. So, Last Post. There we were, laying in bed, discussing the things that came in our heads. Josephine, I said, the man, Clive O's man, the man, is going to Covent Garden to Sylvia Plath Poetry. What is that? Now, you may not know, but she and I are fans of long dead youthful poets, many of whom went too soon. Sylvia, 30, suicide, and Sexton, 46, suicide, and Woodbecker, Lastakabo Ishigawa, 26, TB, to name but three. Misuzo Kaniko, 27, suicide, that makes four. Dylan Thomas, 39, pneumonia. And the famous trio of English romantics, Keats, 26, TB. Byron, bled to death by himself and doctors. Shelley, 30, drowned or murdered. Add some more. I saw a post I spout on Facebook by the man I recount. She's excited by this post recounted, puts down Sylvia. Really? What is that? Phone in hand, I begin to scroll, but all I find is lots of troll. Hang on, the man is a friend, so a few clicks later, I'm on his page. Here I say, here it is, pointing to that certain post. But as I read, the certainty drifts. My brain does a jump. The words unjumble, and there for all to see is silver path poetry. What is that? <laughs> Senility. Thank you. <laughs> That's me done. Brilliant. Thank and you the, host, the host of silver path poetry just happens to be here tonight. It's the hey? Who's the host of Silver Path? Michael. Oh, oh Michael. Hey. Oh, wow. There you that go. That was a fabulous Thanks. night. <laughs> <laughs> Gave us well, a great that is show. a coincidence, isn't it? Brilliant. <laughs> Another big hand for Peter Lay, please. Mm. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much fabulous. for the Gloucester Poetry Society, actually. That, I mean, he, he's sort of the man behind part of the workings. We've got Cli um, Jason who does all the IT and the design of covers and all that sort of thing, websites, etc. But then Peter does quite a lot of the donkey work of admin because I'm hopeless on a computer. So thank you to both of you. Big hand for them both. Okay. So, oh my goodness me. I've gone and lost his bio. Where's it gone? Right. <laughs> I said I said I was going to get my own back and by chance I think I am because I'm messing up. I've been listening to everybody so avidly I've forgotten what I'm supposed to be doing. Just say I'm a dickhead, that'll cover it. <laughs> so we come to our feature, Clive Oseman, who's a Swindon-based Brummy who has been active on the spoken word scene since 2014. Having been to a few traditional poetry open mics, he went along to Hammer and Tongue Bristol, thinking it was just another poetry night, and was blown away by the slam, and even more so by the headliner, Luke Wright. He came away from that event knowing that his life was about to change. He'd found an incredible hidden secret and had to get involved. He's now a multi-slam winner and has headlined at events in many towns and cities, as well as co-hosting events under the Ubi Hype banner with Nick Lovell. Clive has always endeavoured to perform a mixture of serious and humorous material during a set. He spent, and this isn't part of the bio, but I might say that pre-pandemic, Clive travelled all over the country on Britain's marvellous railways and we used to get quite a few <laughs> comments from <laughs> about trains not running <laughs> or running really late um, but since the pandemic he's gone even further and now uh, he goes all over the world 
um, and who Beehive has flourished under this lockdown and introduces, as you all know, a number of different online form formats. And uh, he, he visits so many countries now that he can sometimes be in Australia and uh, America on the same day. So <laughs> it's fabulous to hold him down, stop him zooming about, keep him in Gloucestershire, and let's hear from Clive Oseman, the man himself. Big hand, please. Thank you. The introduction's as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually feel a bit of a fraud tonight, headlining after everything else I've heard, so apologies. And anybody that knows me well knows that I do tend to bring the tone down a little bit sometimes. My language is sometimes a little bit, um, shall we say... Turning you down. <laughs> Um, yeah, my uh, I, I, I do introduce the odd swear word, so if anybody objects to that, then you might be well off covering your ears. So um, I'm going to start uh, with some COVID poems, loosely based, I suppose. But um, And I have written some serious COVID poems, but they are never going to be performed. They were just written in depression or whatever in the middle of the night, and they're never going to be performed. Although one or two of them are actually in the trawler. Uh, but the ones I like to do are a bit more light-hearted. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is the A to Z in life of life in lockdown. So this was written right at the beginning of lockdown. So one or two of the things are a little bit outdated now, yeah, but you'll all remember them and they're, they're still relevant. So anxiety accentuated as antisocial airheads act appallingly, actively avoiding, adapting and argue against advice. Arseholes. Bastards, boneheads, badly behaved, blithering bozo brain buffoons. Caution. Crackpot conspiracy codswallop can cause comas. Clive cracks, commences a concerted kicking and continues ceaselessly until you're comatose. Distancing. Do it, dickheads. Enthusiasm eroded. Energy non-existent, entirely exasperated. Ennui. Flatulence. Fuck it. Fart furiously like thunder, freely, fearlessly, fantastic. Getting grumpy, going gaga, guilty of greed. Generosity is a good goal. Go fund me, ginger gobshite. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Great. Open your holidays, not hexed. Happiness in the heat. <laughs> Head case. <laughs> If isolation is inciting insanity, it is incredibly important not to integrate with idiots and imbeciles who ignore instructions. Jim Jams, Judge Judy, junk food, Jameson's, joints, kaleidoscopic koalas, knitting kippers, kinky kangaroos in khaki kimonos, cowabunga. Lockdowns, little luxuries, long lazy lyings, lots of literature and loo rolls. Meaningless Monday mornings, masks, mass mayhem, martial law maybe, Mars bars, meat pies, macaroons, miraculous man boobs. New Nostradamus nonsense is nigh, nozzing erds notice nuances in his nebulous narratives, never when needy, naturally. Outrageous obfuscations origin uh, originate online. Be objective, open-minded, observant. Obnoxious oddballs obliterate optimism. Pricks purchasing pasta in a panic. Pandemonium prevails. Poor people eat pop noodles or perish. Paracetamol? Pah, piss off. <laughs> Quack remedies. Quarantine. Cues. Quarrels over quotas. I quit. Rules and regulations, regular reviews, radical restrictions, repeatedly renewed, read for recreation, recite a retro song, ringa ringa roses. That's really, really wrong. Socialising strictly stopped, surreal silence on the streets, state supported salaries, sport suspended, season scrapped, stay safe, save lives, self isolate. Tragedy, turmoil, trying times, travel timetables, terminally trashed. Troglodytes are totally trendy, and Trump is still a total tosser. <laughs> Uncle Ulysses in Octane Upfield uploaded his unaccompanied ukulele usage to YouTube. Utterly underwhelming. 
vitriol, venom, vacuous verbosity, vile, viral vilification, Facebook. <laughs> Walking, one walk. World Wide Web, Ra whoa, what, what are you watching, weirdo? X, uh, fuck. Um, express love, <laughs> X, 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 excellent. YouTube, yoga, yo-yos, yearning for yesteryear, yeah. <sighs> Zoom, spoken words, new zeitgeist. Xavier, zest at its zenith, the end. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, so as I allu alluded to in that poem, with all the loony conspiracy theories doing the rounds, I was fully expecting someone to claim that Nostradamus had predicted it all. And sure enough, it happened, you know, and I will be returning to these conspiracy loons later. But um, this next poem is, I'll take it you've all heard of William McGonagall, maybe not so much the overseas uh, people, but probably the worst published poet of all time was William McGonagall. Basically, as long as it the last, you know, as long as the last word in every line rhymed, it didn't matter if it made sense, it didn't matter if it scanned, it didn't matter if there's any rhythm, but it was poetry. And this is Nostradamus meets William McGonagall. It will be the year of our Lord, 2020, and the numbers dying, they shall be plenty, dropping like flies showered in fly spray all over the world and in the UK. And a leader called Boris, a philandering tit, will not, well, knock me down with a feather, he will catch it. But as strong as an ox, a man will survive in time for the birth of child 25. And it shall emerge that Donald J. Trump, his lookalike brother from another mother, did save him to send him home to his temporary lover by injecting him with disinfectant and making the COVID feel bad and repentant. This great plague sent by Bill Gates to harm us predicted in this verse by Nostradamus, but wrongly credited by people with intentions honourable to some Scottish geezer called William McGonagall. Thank you. <laughs> See, th this is real poetry. This, this is what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> right, I, I said at the beginning, I like to mix up um, comedy stuff and serious stuff and I still do, although mostly now I'm writing comedy because I really do believe we need to be laughing at the moment. And we did a comedy night last night to do BI, which really lifted my mood. I, yeah, I was up early this morning and I didn't sleep and it was great. But um, so, yeah, but I'm going to get a bit serious now. And the next one is um, pretty much a true story, really. And it's called Simple. I wish I could be one of those people happy with their lot, a simple outlook, content with a closed book of a life going nowhere, unconcerned by the wider world because they like the hand they hold, have a past to look back on to protect them from the cold, to stay with them until they're old, and a bridge stretching back to those times through the friends that they made who took similar journeys to be replayed in their thoughts and talks on rainier days. I wish I had done all the things that so many take for granted, that I wasn't the butt of the mirth because I didn't get to do what makes their memories worth that little bit extra. Do you remember? No, I don't. Didn't you ever? No, I didn't. But you must have. No, I fucking didn't. <laughs> That's what I feel like. I want to scream and I want to shout. No, you've been told enough times, so shut your fucking mouth. But I don't. I smile or I laugh because the joke's so funny, isn't it? You didn't when you raised in the middle of nowhere and kept in a box. <laughs> Tee hee. I might as well have been. <laughs> but to say that ruins it all, you see. What fun is there if I puncture your glee by talking about the real me, not the caricature you like to imagine? So feel free. Take a low shot to get a cheap singer, get a cheap singer if that makes you feel any bigger. The person that I am today was manufactured in the yesterdays, programmed with a lifetime of faults so that fucked up and lonely is my default. Yes, I've made progress. It's better than it used to be. There's sticking plaster on the biggest scars, and when people talk out of their arse, not knowing when they go too far, I go along for the ride. It's a matter of pride, not letting them see how easily I come undone, how much I want to hide. Then, 
when I slink away and sink, I think at least some people are aware and kid myself that they may care. Too soon, it seems, they've just forgotten that I'm there. And I go on wishing that I was one of those people with a happy past to wear. Thank you. Oh. See? I'm not all stupid and, you know, sometimes I do all uh, sad stuff and everything. But, right, the next one is um, partly true and partly not. And you've got to decide which bit's true and which, we, which one's not. And it's called endorsement. I used to lack faith in what I do. There were times when I was happy, but they were few. And soon the old dates would be renewed. I will be back to where I started, thinking I was through, and it was time that I departed from the scene, put up that protective screen and thought of what could have been, if only, if only. The story of my life, six letters that define me, two words that would remind me that I always missed the boat, found a trace of hope beneath that loot, that I always missed the boat, found a trace of hope beneath that loser's cloak, when in reality, my chances were remote. But that has changed now. Poetry found me and showed me how I always had a chance. Maybe not in romance, because anyone who knows me invested in an extra long, extra long barge pole because they think I'm an arsehole. But I can make people laugh sometimes. And do woe is me in rhyming lines. And OK, I'm not refined. And I am defined as someone who's inclined to cost too much. Use swear words as a crutch when otherwise I'll be fucked. Whoops. But that's OK. They're only words anyway. So, I decided to ask for endorsements to supply some reinforcements when the battle was being lost. I posted a request on Facebook, a bit like asking for quotes for a book, but requesting poets to send their thoughts on what, I like, on what I'm like when I perform. And now, for the first time, I'm going to empty the contents of my postal sack. And yes, I did say postal sack, to reveal the compliments that I got back. So, not all these letters, I, I haven't opened any of them. Uh, I've been saving them up for tonight because I, th I just think it's a good thing to do. I'm quite confident that I'm going to get some good, sort of good reviews. I might get one or two bad ones, but, you know. Um, so, the first, this first one. Clive. Oh, you have such wonderfully inventive ideas for poems and then completely ruin them with your lack of talent. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, obviously, some of these are... A bit jealous. I probably they probably haven't got a feature set of BI or something, and they, you know, they, you know, they can't cope with that. Uh, so here's another one. Dear Clive Oseman, your poems have too much rhyme and as much depth as a puddle in the desert. Sort it out. Okay, <laughs> this is not going as well as I hope, but there's plenty more. There's bound to be some good ones. <laughs> Is another one. Oh, well, I think I recognise his handwriting, actually. This is going to be good. Okay. Ootsman, your poetry is meaningless, puerile, and ridiculous. Some say you are mad, a sandwich short of a picnic, or more pertinently, a syllable short of a haiku. Though I think you are a complete tanker. And of course, I recognise that. This times like this, you get to find out who your friends are, isn't it? I suppose. I'm beginning to think this wasn't a very good idea. I wish I'd read them first. <laughs> Dear Chloe. Oh, yeah, that's better. I saw you on Zoom last night, and your last poem was amazing. Oh, no, wait. That was someone else. You were shit. <laughs> Final notice, please pay now. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm suffering here. <laughs> if I had your collected work, I'd break into the bookshop to put it back. Sign Nick Lovell. <laughs> 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 I've got three more. There's got to be one good one, hasn't there? 
Oh, this bloke looks like he spilt, spilt his dinner down the paper. But when my mate said you reminded him of McGonagall, <laughs> I thought he meant Alvis, not William. Okay. Two more, so the agony is nearly over, I suppose. I promised you a feature set, but I've seen your recent performances and uh, my event has folded and the, the venue has burned down. And uh, yeah, like uh, the landlord got leprosy. Uh, sorry, I'll be in touch, probably. Mm. <laughs> Actually, that's that's amazingly near to the truth in one case, but there you go. Um, <laughs> and the last one. If there were a poetry hall of fame, you would be the draft excluder. Signed, Jason Conway. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, not quite what I expected, but I think it's just jealousy reflective in the invective of vindictive divs like Jason. There is no need for me to heed these words. I hope we are agreed. As I'm often known to, known to shout, if you can't say something nice, I'll punch your fucking lights out! Because you ain't cold. Unless, of course, you're female. And then I'll ask to see your barge pole. Okay, so that didn't quite go as the plan. So, Jason, when you're doing all your wizardry bits, I know I've just insulted you, but if you could cut that out, because I, I don't want people to know, I, I really do want people to think, you know, that I'm loved. So, you know, I, I don't really want that one to be included. Okay. Thank you. Can we have everybody unmute because you need to give him a. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Fabulous stuff, Clive. Thank you. Fabulous. Love it. You're only saying that because you think I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've got two more. Uh, and I was only joking about editing that out, uh, uh, Jason, just in case you thought I was serious. <laughs> uh, right, I've got two more. One is an old favourite, which virtually all of you will have heard. Um, but I like it, so I'm going to do it again. And the last one's a relatively new one that some of you will have heard and some of you won't. Uh, but I like it. So this one is um, the one where you have to imagine that every time you read a typo or you mishear something, the world magically changes so that what you read or what you thought you heard becomes reality by magic. And this is a rather random take on what would happen if every single type mistake changed the world to fit its template. If one letter omitted or added, any others changed or out of place had a consequence for the human race. Like... Art Carbuncle singing, I only have ease for you, may not endear him to the Tory party when most prefer snorting Charlie, yet he was partly responsible for the sound of violence. He is to you, Mrs. Robin Sod, and bridge over troubled Walter. His weirdness never seemed to fall to now. I don't know why Walter is troubled or even who he is, but it seems somewhat <laughs> harsh to stick him under a bridge. We could have some wonderful movies, as if the originals needed improving, like 101 Damnations, a hell of a film, I'm sure you'll agree. Then The 39 Sheks, where Cruella decided a change of breed would just as well fulfil her need. <laughs> Joseph and his amazing testicular dreamboat. <laughs> Whatever that may be about. <laughs> And inglorious bat turds about a flying mammal that met Ozzy Osbourne and crapped itself with nerves. We would have criminal Spice Girls called Felony B and Felony C. Mm -hmm. Blues singing about a supermassive asshole. And that's not all. Kids would hear Humpty Dumpty shat on the wall. <laughs> there would be a black country killer called the Boston Strangler. And Gordon Brown is a song by the Danglers. Mm -hmm. A bit of hard work never hurt anyone, though this I doubt. One over the head and you like to be out. And a bird in the hand is worth two on the bus, I concede. A friend in need is a fiend indeed. <laughs> Liverpool fans singing, you'll never wank alone. The butcher giving his dog a boner. <laughs> Putin interfered in Trump's erection and probably causing nasty infection. And I heard 
Harry Potter's Noblet of Fire appeared to be up for hire. How uh, much? If you ever have to ask the prick, you can't afford it, Squire. Um, <laughs> I think this poem is the dog's bollocks. Others will call it puppycock. But on one thing we can all agree, too many cocks really do spoil the broth. And you could end <laughs> up with a meal of wanker's crisp sandwiches and a packet of clitoris all sorts. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I told you I was a real poet, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> right, this last one. Um, it's a wonder the neighbours haven't called the police to me yet for this one. So I'm going to, I'm aiming to make them actually do it tonight. Um, <laughs> and it's called Disciple. And this is the last one. So thanks for listening. And uh, you might want to put some of your plugs in now if, if past performances are anything to go by. But it's called Disciple, or otherwise known as the Tinfoil Hat Poem. <laughs> when this event is over, I want you all to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And no, it's not for poetry. That's the conventional side of me, the one who has no devotees. On YouTube, I am different. The sheer power of my preaching will leave your senses sleeping. Your judgment will be compromised. You will find yourself being hypnotized into following like sheep. And you will worship at my feet, feel feeding into my deceit as I fill your mind with false belief. How the virus is a hoax. And all the doctors and professors have sold you a lie to give the government an alibi. And you won't be hard to coax to give me money for my research. <laughs> into how the mask is stealing freedom like some kind of cultish church. So expose the government agenda, expose that rogue Bill Gates, burn down all the 5G masks, stand side by side with fascist hate, burn the masks and breathe the air, speak your truth, the state beware. They're poisoning the water, you know. <laughs> Each litre from the tap contains five drops of mosolin, which starves your brain of oxygen and makes you believe what they think is good for them. Only this special water purified in my factory can protect you from this tyranny. <laughs> so expose the government agenda, expose that rogue Bill Gates, burn down all the 5G masks, stand side by side with fascist hate, burn the masks and breathe the air, speak your truth, the state, Beware, buy this pure water, just five pounds a bottle. Wake <laughs> up. Well, just five pounds a bottle, I tell you. Your confidence respected. Wake up to the tyranny. <clears throat> All major cards accepted. David Icke endorses this. Yes, the David Icke endorses this. I said David Icke endorses this. <laughs> It's an offer that's too good to miss, so get rid of oppressive masks and in the taste of freedom bask. <clears throat> Protect loved ones from the hyped up hoax with these special natural pills. They may look like simple aspirin, but they can cure all ills. No poison from big pharma, no side effects, no drama, <laughs> no need to feel dejected. All major cards accepted. So expose the government agenda, expose that rogue Bill Gates, burn down all the 5G masks, stand side by side with fascist hate, burn the masks and breathe the air, speak your truth, the state, beware. Reject the narrative they feed you, the lies the government need you to believe. <clears throat> To cut the strings that control you, this is what you have to do. For just £300, we can enrol you on our online course to make you wise, called How to Fight Establishment Lies. We will take these tyrants by surprise. Just £300, no applicant rejected, and all major credit cards accepted. So expose the government agenda, expose that rogue Bill Gates, burn down all the 5G masks, stand side by side with fascist hate burn the masks and breathe the air speak your truth the state beware and i will be grateful for all that you can spare freedom <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you very much. You're oh, wonderful. <laughs> Blow raspberries. No. Uh, <laughs> come up with you never know what he's going to come up with please a really big enormous hand oh Clive man I saved that especially filling up for tonight I didn't even do it last night how good was that yes, yes. <laughs> thank you Clive thank you Clive brilliant oh that's brilliant and uh just give because he's not doing it just give his book uh this could be verse I should know what it's called because I work <laughs> <laughs> with him on it um, <laughs> it's a brilliant book um and it's got all the usual favorites of, of humor but it's also got some some really um deep and penetrating thought in it as well so if you can believe he's actually capable of it <laughs> ouch <laughs> Dig up the whole trunk to prove it to, to, to ghostwrite it uh, <laughs> <laughs> and available on Amazon. There, just want to it. say one thing while we're on about Donald Trump, because I did say this last oh, night. Oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of you, a lot of you weren't there, so I would like to say that obviously we hopefully get rid of Trump next month. But you know, only hopefully. But but it's funny how he's behind in the polls, and all of a sudden he's got supposedly he and Melania have got. Um, COVID-19, but I don't know the truth of that. Some people say that it, it's, you know, it, it's all a fake and, you know, it, it's not true and it's all because it's behind in the polls. But I'm absolutely certain of one thing, whatever may be the case, this is definitely not the first time that Melania has faked it for the Donald. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> <laughs> brilliant no. thank you so much Clive that was a fantastic end to a really brilliant night I mean the open mic tonight has been so talented everybody has their own strengths and I can't you know I can't think of a single poem that I heard that I wasn't transfixed by so mm -hmm. I want to thank you all for for making it such a fabulous fabulous night um, you may see that on the chat, Jason has put a link. Um, it's probably disappeared up there a bit now. I'll try and bring it down. Um, if you realise that, you know, when you come to these um, online mics, we, we don't have to buy coffees and we don't buy cake and we don't buy a beer. Um, and so if you could uh, donate just a little to the GPS in whatever you feel you would like to but it does help us keep going um so it's much appreciated and also there is a um a button for donation on the actual gps site so i'll leave it at that okay. and while you're thinking of that i'll just read one more poem before we leave and that will be that and i've chosen this one because it's about omens and i was going to read it before clive started just in case there were any bad omens around. <laughs> but I left it till the end. So this is called Omens. On the day he moved into her flat, she saw the crow on her garden fence. The large bird watched her, its lid flicking like a shutter across the black lens of its eye. Her image caught in a bird's brain. When he arrived with his bags and guitar, the crow cawed once and flew away. On the day of their wedding, she saw the crow on the roof, tilting its head to get a better view of her. She shivered, though it was a hot summer's day. As the car arrived to take her to the church, the crow cawed twice and departed. Through the twists and turns of her life, she thought she caught sight of the crow out of the corner of her eye, its beak open about to squawk, but it remained silent and she endured in the hostile environment. When she saw the crow in the old apple tree, 
and heard it call three times. She knew everything was over. She sensed his absence in the house. She used her phone to capture the crow, its um, image caught in her memory. Then she tweeted the picture with the caption, just one crow, there's been no murder here. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Okay, I think we're at the end and it's a sad thing actually because I've thoroughly enjoyed tonight. It's been brilliant. And I want to make sure that everybody gives a big hand to the open micers, please. And to all you people who've just been sitting as audience, thank you so much, because without an audience, what is the point? So thank you. And I do want to say thank Sally you. Aspen Aston is also in the trawler, I think, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We missed her out, and I didn't, didn't. realise. So I'm sorry about that, Sally. Um, so thank you, everybody. Big last round applause for Clive Oseman. Well done, sir. Oh, well, yes. brilliant. The whole thing's been what brilliant. Like. Well, took him in the picture, so I took a treat. This was lovely. <laughs> Somebody's talking away in the background. Mute yourselves and have a chat. Um, there will be a video of this put out by Jason at some point. We have recorded it. So. Oh, no. Yes, oh, no. we have you. <laughs> we have you shouting and swearing and cursing. Hooray! <laughs> hey, it's Howard. Hi, Howard. Hello. Hi, Howard. <laughs> Oh, Howard! You, you had Howard? one more in the audience, Clive. Oh, hey! <laughs> Came in at the start of yours. <laughs> you just... You, Never mind. <laughs> You'll recover. <laughs> <laughs> not sure I will. <laughs> <laughs> what about your neighbours? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not sure they will either. <laughs> he actually knocked on your door yet? No. No, oh, not really. No. <laughs> um, oh, it's been a fabulous night. Um, it's actually amazing the quality of the pro poetry. I, I just, I don't think people, when they look at Crafty Crows, and because we, 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 we span the gap between page and performance poetry, and I love that. I love the richness that it brings, and I don't think they realise necessarily how, what quality we have here. First class. I think that's that's true generally people just don't know how good this scene is you know they think okay. poetry and they think of what they learned at school and you know all that sort of stuff yeah and you know um people just don't realize how good and how much talent there is out there at the moment and the entertainment <laughs> when yeah. you've got somebody <laughs> like <that. laughs> and Marilyn actually Marilyn had had us in fits oh. over her phoenix yeah yes yeah. yeah. No, it was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It's been wonderful. It was fantastic. Everybody was great. Oh, Thank I'm you. forgetting something. I'm forgetting to say who's coming next. So, on Wednesday, the 4th of November, at 7 o'clock, we have Chloe Jacquet. Oh, I really want to hear her. And so, so, and she will be reading, I'm sure, some of the stuff out of her new book, Take It By The Line. Uh, mm. You might want to know, too, that um, she did this video called The Dealer, uh, and it's, she's used it to promote her book, and she's sent it around um, uh, YouTube and uh, tweets, tweeted it. But actually, she has been shortlisted for a film award isn't it a short film award somewhere four of them now four of them now yeah so yeah i think and and she's writing lyrics for people for songs yeah. that are being sung by um various groups that are going up in the in the world as well so i think she's going to end up very very famous <laughs> Black eyes things hopefully <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cool. 
anyway, Michael, Michael Collins, you came in late. So lovely to see you. I mean, not late. You came in in time to see Clive. Which I, is came, I came in very late because the alarm didn't go off. Oh, and dear. I, I finally woke up because it's five o'clock start here <laughs> if, I catch, if I catch the whole show. Oh. And wow. it's too early for an old bloke, you know. <laughs> Oh. Well, as I say, it will be it will be put out. The recording will be put out, so you can catch up. Yeah. I mean, this is fabulous because we have people like Catrice in America who get up and uh, and come at five o'clock in America to workshops. Would you believe it? Would you be able to get up at five o'clock and write a poem? Well, maybe, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think that's amazing. And then we have people like you who get up at five o'clock. To come and see oh. us that is brilliant of you Thank in you australia so yeah. try, for next wow. time. try for next time thank you <laughs> nice to see you, Michael. you thank you and not forgetting simon was in the philippines wasn't he remember yeah, yeah. yeah. Simon, when he was in the philippines was getting up at god knows what time yeah, craziness, wow. yeah. such That's commitment easy, yeah. Have you got up at five o'clock yet, Special K? Um, yeah, I've done five o'clock in the morning. Um, actually, no, it's like four o'clock in the morning for Australia and um, three o'clock in the morning for New Zealand. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Gosh, these international poets. It's, a fa it's amazing. I think I'll have to get my act together and have a look for some of these places to go to. Um, certainly down in, I've never been to a poetry thing in Australia or New Zealand, so I'm going to have to look at that. Do you have a poetry um, event down there, Michael? Uh, oh, yes, there is one coming up called Word Hurl Anti Slam, which um, How do you spell I, that? <laughs> uh, word, word Hurl, W-O-R-D, H-U-R-L, oh, yeah. Anti right. Slam. And there's also poetry at the pub. Um, I don't know if, if we're friends on Facebook, Josephine, but I can. Uh, do you do you well? If you're on the GPS site, are you? Do you, you know the Gloucestershire uh, Poetry Society? I can find that and put a link to it. Yeah, Is if that... you join, you don't. You just ask to join. It's a closed group, but if you ask okay. to join and click all the boxes, uh, we can yeah. let you in, and then you can put your link up on our site. All right. That would be brilliant. Okay. Well, I'll we'll do that. Visit you. <laughs> yeah, we'll come and yeah, visit you. Yes. Yeah. It's some ungodly hour. Yeah. Yeah. Jason's Although, just, just put the link up. Jason's yeah. just put the link up. Brilliant. All right. Thank you. We'll do Thank it. you. And I'll say goodbye. So you have a great day or night. I'm not sure what it is. So. You can go so, back yeah. to bed now. <laughs> right. Have a good day, Michael. Bye. Thank you, Michael. Good seeing Bye. you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank Bye, you. Everyone. Have a good night. Yes. Bye. Bye. Oh, you're Bye. a good boy. He's lovely. He's so gorgeous. Night, night, little one. Look at that little <laughs> face. Oh. <laughs> Babies are in tonight. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. See you again Bye. soon. Yes. And Jess, see you soon, Catrice. Thank you, Josephine. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Peter. Bye. Bye. Bye, Clive. Bye. <sighs> Thank you, Doc, for, for, for keeping through the whole lot this time. You've even you even survived Clive. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody does that. <laughs> you time, are, you, are you sure I survived? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. You're still there, so I'm hoping so. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, and this is the truth. I'm not making this up. Since I wrote that tin hat, tin foil hat poem and put my profile picture of me in the top hat, it certainly sorted out the people that really do believe all that stuff and they've unfriended me in droves. <laughs> <laughs> I only noticed because I like to look at the Facebook memories and sort of look who reacted and remind me, so, you know, to sort of take me back, to self, take myself back to it. And the number of people in the last few weeks that I've seen add friend Ad friend, ever since I did the tin, tin foil hat thing, it's amazing. <laughs> Bizarre. Oh, well, I hope I haven't got any conspiracy theorists on my 
I was, I was in the main, mine were people that I knew before I started doing spoken word. And oh, I didn't right. really know them. You know, they were just online friends. There have been one or two from the Birmingham scene. There, there was one in particular who was always posting about how it was a hoax and how she had had it and she was all right, so everybody else was exaggerating and all that. Yeah. And she she really took umbrage when I when I posted that photo. And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many people <laughs> that, um, that believe in yeah. things, but yeah. yeah. You know, I suppose we could do a poetry night, everybody wearing masks, couldn't we? Hmm. There, there are some folks uh, I talk to, and, and they say, why are you doing so much in the poetry world? And I, I say that uh, I'm committed to it. And they say, yeah, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> Committing for it. <laughs> <laughs> like session, isn't it? Oh, I love it. Well, it's lovely to see you again, Doc. It's really nice. And I'm, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you all out there because uh, I'd like, I'd like you to know that that I think practically everybody who was here tonight and everybody that I know are really rooting for you and to get Joe Biden in. I mean, the world is looking, is looking for you know. Way I'm, out. I'm just afraid, uh, whatever the result of the election, uh, we are headed for a civil war in this country. Oh, I hope you're wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong too, but I, I'm seeing too many indicators. And the awful thing for you as a society is that your gun laws you know if there is a civil war it will be nightmare yes yes you know we may have a civil this, war this country, won't, this country won't survive uh it, it'll wind up as as several smaller countries which will be ripe for the picking by any dictatorial power that wants oh okay Oh, well, I hope you're wrong. I seriously, seriously hope you're wrong. Uh, I hope so too, but as I said, I'm seeing the indicators and I've been seeing the, those indicators grow over the past 10 years or so. Yeah. yeah I saw the, the, uh, uh, the Facebook um recording of the militias that were gathering from different sides. Yeah. I just thought that is just powder keg. That's just waiting for one spark to go off. Well, all, all that has to happen is for you know who to, to give the word and, and it'll happen. Yeah. That is so scary. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's a bummer. That's brought us down to <laughs> nothing like any other high notes, is there? <laughs> so, but it's, I mean, no, I'm sorry because this is this is really serious. I mean, we're looking on from the other side of the water. We might have a, a, a we might have a civil unrest because, again, well, our country is split two ways, um, and we have a right wing that is trying desperately to say that the left wing is crap and awful and is all the mm -hmm. problem, you know. So we've got the same thing, but we haven't got the armaments. We haven't got the, you know, we'll, we'll be fighting with, with, with rolling pins and possibly kitchen knives, but there, there's not the same problem. Don't forget yes. the rulers. Oh, and the rulers, yes. <laughs> and the broomsticks. And the broomsticks. But I, but, but I mean, it's not the same scenario. It's not the same. Yes, no. I have got uh, a samurai sword in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unsharpened, I might add. <laughs> but you think. <laughs> Put it here. <laughs> oh, well. But anyhow. Uh, <laughs> oh. well, what are we looking at? It's a samurai, samurai sword. sword. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. It's my son's. Oh. It's the sort of thing you give a son for a present, you know. But it's not a real one. <laughs> it's actually wood. It's a training one. Mm -hmm. um, but we painted it silver, so it looked like. 
No, I mean, I mean, we we're, we're all with you. I just wanted you to know that, and to know that. Thank you. Everybody is praying and thinking and hoping and. <sighs> yeah. Clive. The was, the wife I just ma mailed in our, our ballots sorry. today. Sorry. The wife and I just mailed our ballots in today. Ah. Right. Postal ballot. Do yeah. you want us to pay you by our uh, PayPal? Um. Yeah, that, that that would be fine. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I had a look. I haven't got bank details for you, because you know, last time we paid you, we obviously paid you cash. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do we, do we get three bottles of water? Hey. Yeah, you, you can buy some water as well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Five pounds bottle. Six you can have 100 bottles for 499 pounds. I, need to I, want to do, I want to do the course. Yeah, 300 quid. Oh, I'll, I'll send you my details. <laughs> oh, and sadly, we have to laugh, Doc, Jan, Doc, Doc Janning. Let's uh, pray and laugh. <laughs> yeah. Pray and laugh. Oh. We live in sick times in, in a lot of respects. <laughs> I can't uh, believe it. My mother was a was a very political lady. Um, she was a liberal and she was a county councillor and she was very political. And uh, I think she would she would really be turning in her grave if she could. I don't think she'd believe it. I don't think she'd believe that the world could go that bad that quickly. The, wor the world has gone entirely sideways. Yeah, uh, there's there's so much unrest in so many countries, especially with with uh, neo-Nazi groups and, and the like trying to take over governments uh, in Europe. It, it's frightening. Yeah, well, this well, is the sad thing about being, you know, trying to get Europe fragmented again which is what trump would have liked actually and i'm sure that's why we've got brexit and partly um it was to break down the european common market um politically mm. i'm just hoping they're not going to achieve it as you know we're the only ones that get fractured out <laughs> right, there you go anyway i hope i hope when we see you next it's fourth of november when's the when's the election day uh, election is the first Tuesday. What's that day? First, first Monday. Third. I, I don't. I, yeah, that that would be the third of November is election day. Right. right. So when we see you next on the fourth, we will know what's happened. Ah. Uh, yeah, we will know what's happened, and well. And let's hope it's let's hope it's good news. Yeah. 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 Uh, the some of the one of the best things that could ha that could happen is for him to say that he is resigning from office uh, <coughs> before his term ends, but then Pence would move into the office and pardon him of all the crimes he has committed for which he has already, you know, they're, they're trying to indict him in, in all kinds of local courts no, and I state don't. courts. And uh, Pence will just pardon him and then he'll try to move back into the White House. How does he do that if he's lost? Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, Presumably, well, Pence went in. He would lose. That would that would mean the election would go, wouldn't it? Because he hasn't got the same hold. Well, the the, uh, the election would still go forward, uh, but I think if he if he if the orange one is going to resign at all, he will resign after the election, so that right. he can then be immediately pardoned of all his sins and not have to face courts and prison time. Well, I hope you're wrong. I really, really do. Yeah, there's a lot of overseas governments after him as well for non-payment of his yeah. uh, loans. So it's oh, not yeah. just, they can't, pardon, they can't pardon him for those. 
So no. there are, well, there are yeah. banks all around the world that are after him for, because he, he borrows money and never pays it back. So Right. But, but the thing is, the, uh, I don't know if those are classed as criminal acts in those countries and or he could be extradited from this country for doing those things. Mm, probably not. I don't know. Well, well, we'll just have to see I'm, how it I'm goes over the next month. Right. I'm with Pell. Anyway, okay. I hope you have a, a sleep, a, a, a peaceful night tonight and try not to think about it and have a good sleep. <laughs> and right. if I don't to sleep tonight, I, I, I think I'll just... I haven't slept well in years. No. Okay. No, the feeling, so does Clive. <laughs> Meanwhile, my my other half sleeps every night snoring well. <laughs> <laughs> if he snores too much, he may need uh, a CPAP. A what? Uh, uh, t an assisted breathing unit uh, for uh, sleep apnea. Oh, right. I've had, no, no, I've had all the tests. I've had operations. None of it works. I'm fine. I just make a <laughs> hell of a row. And, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm fortunate because I have a gift. I have the gift of sleep. It's my gift just for me. Yeah. <laughs> the only the only way I sleep is with with uh, assistance of pills. All right. Okay. That is a bad route to go. Yeah, that is a difficult route. I have, uh, <clears throat> I have avoided that route so far. It does mean that sometimes I have a a, a, a week of not sleeping, but eventually it will catch up, and then I'm okay for a bit again. I try yeah. not to take pills. I do occasionally have a little bit of whiskey. I will uh, say that. <laughs> my glass is empty. Ha having had a quad bypass, I need what whatever little amount of sleep I I can attain, yeah. and otherwise, yeah. Well, keep I safe and keep healthy, and we'll see you next month. Whatever happens, we'll be looking Lord forward. Lord in the creek, as they say in our south, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. <laughs> okay then, night doc. Good night. Okay. Thank you, Clive, for everything. That was brilliant. Yes, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> any time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I've got a lot to I'm do. wounded. <laughs> he knows I don't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I better watch out in case she ever asks me to be the featured reader. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, right, that's me. I'm going to go now. I'm gonna... And if you go, we've all got to go. So, yeah. right, okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You're Thanks, well. Clive. I've, done, I've done the transfer. Oh, right. thank you. <clears throat> and we've got the we've got the link up, haven't we, for um on yeah. the actual GPS for donations. Every single time I forget it. But it's not just me, you forget it and he forgets it. So we forget it and we need to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Your fault. Oh, me? <laughs> <laughs> Your fault. <laughs> Probably my fault. No, you two okay. are the directors. Jason's got green glasses all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. he's gone green. Oh, I, I don't know. It, it must be the uh, reflection. Reflection of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I need, I need, uh, I have a chat. We need to have a, another chat for about bits and pieces. So um, I'll be in touch. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just going to go over to Facebook now and then put in the, um, the, the, uh, donation link on the event yeah that would be brilliant thank With you ever so much yeah, so anyone can have it, head over to it yeah do you think i don't we know should... whether it works much for beehive do you get much clay we do pretty well actually yeah we do a lot better than i expected um Good. you know we were so reluctant to do it anyway well um, yeah i think that's part of the trouble i i don't like asking but at the same time you know we are gonna have to get some cash in to keep going so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the end, you just got to be 
hard nosed and do it, haven't you? Yeah. And we've had we've had some really poor months. We've had some really good months, you know. And um, you know, we we've I think we've had two where we've actually shown a very small profit. Ooh. Um, but very good. Uh, we've had a few where we <coughs> we've actually got nothing, but that's yeah. mainly because I forgot to mention it. Like all. we did. Yeah, <laughs> I should always do it at the break. I must remember. We'll put put in here break donation on the on the sheet. Yeah. Yeah. And that will remind me to do it at the break. Um, I thought I'd read another poem in the hope that they might go and do it, but I don't think they did. Clive? Yeah. Do you, do you uh, access just through tickets now? Yeah, at the moment. Um, it's working pretty well. There are still a few problems. Uh, we had a few last night, but um, well, what we're doing now, because with Eventbrite, um, they don't actually get the Zoom link at all. They get the, um, you know, oh, the right. access through that. And so I've got all the email addresses of everybody that comes in. So if anybody causes any problems, you know, we know who it was. I, I went into Eventbrite and you can't get the link. And then it sends it through to you. And then it said, I'm not, I'm you, not. You can't no. get access. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of that. Uh, I don't think all of it, because we we thought we'd cracked it yesterday, but um, I think a lot of it is it, you're not signed into Eventbrite on the on the uh, device that you're using. Oh, okay. okay. But I, oh. but that's where I got the tickets from. Yeah, there are a lot of people on saying my, that. On my phone. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. But um, I... Um, I'll book a ticket for hours, even though I, technically I don't need to, because I like to know how many people are coming. And, you know, so I like to keep an eye on the numbers. So I still get one and Nick still gets one. And um, I, I um, was having problems. Yes, I, I just wanted to explain to somebody how to get in because, you know, I always get these messages. So I just looked, you know, about an hour before and I clicked on it and it said, you do not have access. Now scroll down and just in small print somewhere down the bottom, it, it gave me the option to log in. So I did. And then oh, right. I'll try it. I'll I don't it. think we have to do that with Helm because I mean, with Helm now, what, what I do is uh, the, when you download the ticket, it's got the link on the ticket now. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, for this event, we when we started off, it didn't, I only worked it out halfway through. Uh, but for Chloe's and for Sue's, uh, all the tickets have had the link on it. Um, yeah. so but I, I suppose we still link. get we still get regular people who who come without actually saying they're coming on Facebook or even buying a ticket. Yeah, and I guess we know who they are, so yeah. you can let you have the option to let them in. They don't only have to come through tickets. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, up to now, up to this event, including this event, we've all we've posted. The, the link on the Facebook site as well towards yeah. close to the event. Yeah. Um, whether we need to do that, I don't know. That's a discussion we need well, to Well, that's address. another discussion. If, if, if Jason yeah. needs to get we going, to we probably yeah. have something. But we this is the kind that. of thing we need to do, yeah. Okay, then. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank See you, you soon. Yeah. Take yeah. care. And you. Bye. See you, Jason. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes, thanks. <laughs>